<gasps> we are live and I'm dead tired. I'm very, very tired. So this is only gonna be literally an hour, hour and a half long live stream at best. But I promise you guys, I would always get out here. We literally just drove in. I am exhausted. I am very tired right now. I've been up since eight o'clock this morning, riding the motorcycle up in Jacksonville, Florida. So I'm pretty pooped, but you know what? I decided to go ahead and hop on here and hang out with you guys. And um, you know what? I'll do what I can as a YouTube uh, creator to always hang out with my subscribers, you know, what little I can. Uh, what do you guys think about this video? I know I, I, I have not read through any of the comments. I haven't uh, replied to any of the comments because I was in Jacksonville yesterday and today. And uh, I've got to say that, man, this thing's got a lot of views in one day or 4,000. That's pretty significant right there. And uh, it does a really good job. You know, it's not the quality of the chemical guys torque foam can. It's wood plasticky. But, you know, for what it is, it actually did really good as you guys got to see. So hopefully you guys really, really did like that video. If you haven't seen it already, go check it out. Uh, just to give you guys a heads up, I'm going to tell you right now, I will be doing a head-to-head -head competition It'll be probably, I'm going to shoot for Saturday, but I can't promise you guys anything. You know how it goes. I'm going to put it up, put this up against the torque foam cannon from, uh, the, not the foam cannon, I'm sorry, the foam gun from Chemical Guys. That way we can get a good head to head. But this is actually a pretty cool thing. I mean, it's, it, 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 like having the, the quick release, it, they, you have to actually twist it here on this one. You see how I'm saying? But uh, this one's actually, it's pretty good. I mean, you can lock it in. Oh, shoot. It's dropping water all over me. <laughs> Whoops. So there was a little bit of water still in it, but you know, it's uh pretty good stuff. I mean, you just twist it like this. It works out really good if you want a vertical or horizontal. I mean, it actually did really good for what it is. Again, it's not up to the the higher metal quality of the, 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 the chemical guys version, but for 20 bucks, you know, if you don't, if you don't have a lot of money, it's a really, really good option for you. I mean, I just got so tight. I didn't realize there was still water up in the nozzle here. That's pretty crazy. I, just, I pulled the trigger. So how are you guys doing this fine evening here? Um, I later, literally, like I said, we just got back from Jacksonville, Florida. I was at the 904 uh, Honda Grom ride. It, so it was, it was all Groms, Kawasaki Z125s, any little tiny bike, any small bike. And there was a couple of bigger bikes that came, but mostly all the Groms and stuff. There was almost 300, 300. You know how many motorcycles that is together? I mean, you literally took over the streets of Jacksonville. Cars just pulled off to the side of the road. It was phenomenal. I mean, you just shut down literally. When you once the first got a group of cars coming through, we did, it didn't matter if it was red light or not. Everybody just kept going. You just because you can't break up the group, it's just too big. And nobody really bitched or anything. The police didn't try and stop anybody. You said the police go by and they were like nothing. People were popping wheelies. It was really, really phenomenal. I've never been on a motorcycle ride that big. So that's why I haven't responded to any of your uh, comments uh, that you guys might have posted in the last day or so. So. Just giving you guys a heads up. Oh, you have one, you love it. That's good to hear. My last is six washes. Again, I don't, you know, I don't understand it. Like I, I've, um, the funny thing that you mentioned that is um, on the actual foam can comparison. I had some people say it didn't last more than two or three things. And I'm like, what did you do with your things? You beat it into the ground because it's made of like the foam can. They're both made of brass. And so, and then the bottom is only, the jug is only plastic. So I'm thinking, what did you guys do to this thing? And I mean, I don't have any problems and I've had both the foam cannon and the foam gun from chemical guys for about three years now. And I have, they're very solid. Never had any issues with it whatsoever. Yes. They're more pricey, but I haven't had any issues with it. So by here, these guys are like, Oh, they fall apart. And I'm like, I, I don't know what you do, man. I, I haven't touched anything. I've used the, the Amazon one here a couple of times and I've never had any problems with the Amazon foam gun. So, you know, I'm having a good time with it. Uh, that video, that video alone has over 50,000 views on it. That video is uh, absolutely blowing up. And uh, that is really, really cool to see that kind of stuff. And like, the subscribers, I think, and it's bringing in like today. I think we've, we're going to hit some around 50 new subscribers just in today alone. I can see the subscribers are doing this like month over month. It's slowly going up like this, like the per day amount of subscribers. And that's just awesome. Obviously, the YouTube channel is blowing up, so it's been really good. Uh, I have brother, have uh, have you heard about the Broke Boys World Car? Park? No, I have not. I'm sorry about that, man. Nice one. It looks like it's foam. It's, it. it Vincente, it's a little bit like it. It's definitely a plasticier, like a, a cheaper quality. Here, I'll show it to you. Obviously, here, it's all plastic through here. So the quality is definitely where, um, I'll give you an example. The Chemical Guys foam gun. So when you actually hear, it's all like brass. It's just covered by plastic. Where this is completely plastic. There's, I mean, it's, there's nothing to it. And this is a little bit different, obviously, than the Chemical Guys. But essentially, they put out the exact same results, which is really cool. But again, is, uh, how long is this going to last versus the chemical guys one that's made of brass? I guess it would last really long as long as you don't beat it up or throw it around. Like mine sits on a shelf inside the you know the closet in there in the garage. So I don't have problems with my stuff. I don't throw it on the ground. As soon as I'm done, 
I just make sure they're emptied out. I run water through it and then I just put it up on the shelf. That's how I do all my, my stuff. So I haven't, haven't had any issues. Um, birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday, buddy. Good question. Best product to remove water spots from glass. Um, you know, I've, I've heard some, I do have some, uh, polishes that would probably get those out. Uh, like McGuire's polish can get that out. I've, uh, heard carnival wax will get that out. I haven't personally tried it, but I heard carnival wax will remove it. I have heard, um, uh, what else have I heard? If you do it like a, uh, swirl X, they, there's actually McGuire's makes a water spot remover, but all it is is a polish. That's all it is. So if you just get McGuire's ultimate polish, that's probably all you'll need, honestly. Um, has anyone heard told you? Oh, yeah, I get that all the time, Ashley. All the time. Uh, would you use Walmart foam gun on your car? Um, here's a, the foam gun. Yeah, I don't have any problem with it. The only thing about a foam gun versus the foam can it is I use a lot more soap. We're talking like five or six ounces of car soap in there. And uh, But you really shouldn't need the actual um, a separate two-bucket method. Just have some clear water bucket down there because you're actually going to use – you're already gonna have the suds on there, so then all you gotta just kind of just buff it out like that, or I'm sorry, like wash it with the wash mitt is what I meant by that, and just going back and forth over it. So you should be fine. You need to buy the foam soaker, have uh, citrus wash. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I have a box that just came in. It was delivered today, or it was delivered yesterday. Um, who was it? One of my subscribers contacted me, and uh, they sent me a link. Amazon right now has a big chemical guys deal right now on microfiber towels. It was a six pack for twelve dollars of Chemical Guys microfibers. It's a steal of a deal. It's usually like twenty something dollars for that. So I bought uh, two sets of six. Plus I bought the Chemical Guys um, uh, microfiber towel cleaner. So that literally just came in the mail. It was just sitting on my door when we got home. So you know I like not having to always wash my microfibers. I like having so many that I can just have tons to go through. So like that's why I bought twelve more, and they're the the long, the big ones, you know, that I really like. There, I think they're like sixteen by sixteen or something. And they're silk lined edges, so that way I have even more to work with. And I was out of uh, Masterson's um, uh, microfiber cleaner, so I went ahead and picked that up as well just to try them out. What's going on, Viper? How you doing? Would you? Uh, I'm trying to read through everybody's stuff. Uh, try the foam. Gun from Walmart. It was okay. It leaked a lot. And Dalton, mine didn't have any issues. You guys got to see it. I've used it twice now and uh, zero issues with it all whatsoever. Just make sure everything is connected okay. You know what I mean? Like uh, make sure this is really locked in there good because all it does is just twist in and then just locks in there solid. And that's basically how it is. It's not like this twists or anything. All you do is just literally twist the knob itself and pull it apart. That's all you're doing to it. Uh, so once it's in there, it's literally solid. And then this, obviously, this is this doesn't come off like the chemical guys torque foam can. This thing actually comes off and you twist it. Well, this one, you literally just twist it. That's all you do to it. You just you twist it where it sits and that's all you do. So it doesn't actually pull off like the actual uh, stuff does. Can you review more Rev Automotive products? Uh, Matthew, as soon as they send me some more, I will be glad to do it. They've sent me uh, he sent me some messages saying he was going to send me some more. But whenever he sends me some more uh, products, I'll be glad to review some more. Drying towel that I use is the Griot's Garage microfiber towel. It's a, it's a waffle weave. It's about three feet long by two and a half feet wide. It is amazing. That's what I use all the time. Now, I've heard they have a newer version of it, but it, again, it's the same type of thing. It's about three feet long. It's really big, and you can really knock out your car and dry it up quick. Uh, have you got the test out the Mother Speak Light? I have not, Tristan. My actual plan was to use it, was it last weekend? on uh, the GTR and uh, what, what, did, what happened last weekend? Oh, we had to drop, if you guys don't know, I dropped the prelude, my blue prelude off last weekend over in a, in a, a suburb of Tampa called Wesley Chapel, Florida. And um, remember you, for the last year or so, the, the prelude restorations uh, were kind of put on hold because I bought the GTR, so all my money went to the GTR. Well, I finally found a quality high-end mechanic that does a lot of transmission swaps. So he said, bring it over and I'll do the transmission swap. So I brought the transmission over. He told me what I needed to do. He told me what I had to pay for up front. I've already paid him for uh, all the parts and stuff. So I'll have to pay him for the labor at the end. But he sent me all the pictures so far of everything he has. He's like, it should be done in about two more days. And I'm like, sweet, we'll pick it up next weekend. So we'll have no more old, old ass automatic transmission in it that was really starting to slip bad. That transmission was really starting to slip in the prelude. And I'll have a nice, nice, fully rebuilt manual five-speed transmission in the Prelude. And it'll be like, oh, yes. Because I haven't had a stick shift car since I sold my 370Z. So, you know, that's what's going on there. Hello, David Clark. Speed Clay is like NanoSkin. If you've heard of a company called NanoSkin, it was the first one that did like a, it's a rubbery type uh, uh, product. And what you would do is that's how it took the place of the typical uh, standard clay. 
that you would have to make putty in your hands and stuff like that. It took the place of that. So even if you drop that on the ground, you just pick it up, wash it off with some water, and you can keep going. We're on a clay, a traditional clay. You dropped it on the ground, man. You, you're just going to have to throw that piece of clay away. It picks up any of that little uh, stuff off the ground because it's very sticky. And you then you would like grind that into your paint and obviously call swirls and scratches where the nano skin type products that are now hitting the market, everybody has them from different companies. You just wash it off and you just keep on going. It's, it's just so much better too. Really, really good. And they say you can do between 20 and 30 cars with it. So it is a really, really excellent way to do it. How many microfiber towels do you use the old wash, waterless wash? I would say about three to four. So usually yeah, it's probably about four to be safe. So once one gets a little bit soaked, I just pull out the next one and then I go to the next one and then I go to the next one. So maybe top, side, side, and then back in. That's normally the way I do my stuff. So I have one dry towel and then the one that's going to be, uh, you know, getting the majority of the liquid up, off of the car's paint. What's the update in the white car? Don't know. I was supposed to swing by there this week and I just kind of uh, gave up. Now, we did swing by there on Saturday and the car was moved. It was parked right in front of the shop. So hopefully he is actually getting it done because I did kind of put him into a corner saying, if you're not going to work and I'm going to take it somewhere else. Matter of fact, when I took the blue prelude over to Tampa, um, the guy actually has a, a, a he straight customizes all. He really works heavily on preludes alone and um he has a custom third gen one like that one, but it's completely customized. He has an H22 engine in it. He has all different brakes on all different wheels. He has fifth gen, everything inside of it. I mean, it's, it's the shell of a third gen from a, like a, a early nineties prelude, but it's like everything else is not from the actual car. It's, it's nuts how much he does. And he showed me, a, he actually has a shop in the back of his house and he's like, dude, I can do anything. He's like, bring, he said, if he's screwing with you, he's like, just get the white car to me. And he's like, I'll do everything myself. He's like, trust me. He's like, as you can see, he's like, I know everything top to bottom on this. That's the old, uh, old generation preludes. Uh, hey, I can't find the suds and spray in Canada Walmarts. I am sorry about that yet. You could obviously order it online. That's what you could probably do, buddy. Wax God perform pretty sad. Yeah, I know, Rick. I know. It's just, uh, he, but I talked to him. You know, Wax God is one of the cool guys that I deal with. He's a really straight shooter and he makes really high end products. And what he told me is that obviously it was never formulated to be in the foam can at all. He said his, his game plan for long term is to actually introduce, introduce a foam uh, cannon soap that will work perfectly in the foam can. So I was like, please let me know as soon as you get it. Cause I really want to test it out. And he told me to send it to me right away. But uh, he said that was never formulated. It was meant for only the bucket method. And that's why he said it's all in the laboratory stuff is what they have to do. And they wanted to have a, a really thick lubricity stuff like that car soap and it just didn't work out in the foam can but hey that's why we have fun on fridays and we get to try it all out and that's basically what it came down to uh what do you think is better uh griot's garage detail spray or mcguire's basic uh, detail spray uh griot's garage uh for sure i like griot's garage a lot uh the wireless watch do you recommend Ooh, there's a lot of good ones um this is good one of my probably my top picks right now is going to be your masterson's car care uh, it has a little bit of sealant in it as well or a little bit of so it really looks good and it protects as well. I love that stuff because unlike the rest, it's kind of watery. The Masterson stuff is really just really thick. So when it's it just sits on there and it works really good. Uh, Wax God's one was really good. Um, Grillo's Garage was good. Limitless Car Care was really good. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, the Turtle Wax one for like five or six bucks for a basic waterless wash. Maybe it's not the highest end one with like a wax in it or anything, but it was really, really good. I was actually surprised for five or six bucks. Um, what else did I try? McGuire's did actually decent, pretty decent. Um, who else do I have out there? I don't know. I can't remember anymore. And I'm, I'm trying to go through my head with what I have, but you guys are honestly see how much I actually have. And it's like, holy crap, I have a lot. Uh, I'm new to your channel and I haven't even seen your past videos. And you can you review any ammo. I plan to do that, actually, but probably later on during the year. All right. What I always concentrate on, actually, is your over the counter stuff, your Walmart, AutoZone, stuff like that. And obviously with 2018 that just came out, I'm trying to get through all those products as fast as I can. And then I throw in some like foam Fridays in there, maybe some competition uh, ones during the weekdays, kind of change it up a little bit. So it's not all just reviews during the weekday. So I'll have like two of your reviews during the weekdays. And then the other two will be just like uh, foam Friday or like a, a competition detail thing. So that's why it keeps uh, things changing up a little bit. But I'm almost done with all the 2018 products and then I'll start doing some more audit order order online products. And I have a couple more companies that have already sent me products that they want me to try out. What's up, AJ? I agree about Greer's Garage. Drying towels are the best. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, you know, the car soap is good when you start slippering. Dude, I'm telling you, 
Uh, Omar, when I've had my hands in it before the bucket, you know, it's filled with soap and I grabbed the bottle and it, fl it literally slips out of my hands. Dude, I know it's going to be an amazing car soap because I can't even grab the, grab the bottles because it's so slick in my hands. And I'm like, holy crap, it's great. Freedom Flight, thank you. Martha C., Martha C. is it here. It's been a long time, Martha. I mean, I've been a long time. And from what I can tell, you got rid of that blue car that you had in your uh, little avatar there. Ammo is your new chemical, guys. Uh, ammo has been around for a long time, Omar. Um, obviously, that Larry guy is a complete pro, like a badass pro. And he can teach you a lot of the tips and the tricks. Even if you don't want to use ammo products, that's cool because you can learn all the tricks and then apply those tricks using your own products that you personally buy. But at least that way you get to uh, learn the, the tips from the high, high-end pros, which is really cool. I was going to wait to use my pressure washer on my car. Uh, you, I think you have to wait, is it 30 or 60 days before they say you apply wax or whatever? I wouldn't touch anything until at least after that, especially with anything pressure washer. You know what I mean? Voodoo products. I tried one of them, the wheel, wheel cleaner. It was, yeah, it was okay. As a matter of fact, you're going to see tomorrow the, um, the OxyClean wheel cleaner that uh, Dalton showed us. Um, I bought it at O'Reilly's. The, the nozzle is so just screwed up that it drove me nuts and I just gave him like a terrible passing rate because of that. It says it changes color from uh, blue to brown. It never changed color for me. Uh, I just I just said it was a complete pass, but you're going to see it tomorrow. It'll be OxyClean's new wheel cleaner, and it just didn't do it for me. Um, uh, so I will, Dalton, I, I think you can wash it, but you they, they recommend no waxing, no polishing, nothing that would uh, uh, really put a lot of pressure or issues around on the paint. I want to say it's, it was either 30 or 60 days. When I, well, I had my blue car repainted on the whole side of the car um, when it was hit in the parking lot one time. Uh, and they remember them telling me like 30 or 60 days. So I just kind of left it dirty. I just like, screw it. I'm just going to leave it filthy because I want the paint to be proper and uh, set up before I ever touch anything. So that's what I did. Uh, my car's covered in bugs. Oh, my God. You guys, know, you guys know what love bugs are. So when I was in Jacksonville, Florida, which is in North Florida, right on the Georgia border, um, my God, the love bugs were like flying around the whole time. I'm like, holy crap, they're out. But in Central Florida, they're not here. And it's really weird. Like North Florida has a lot of love bugs and Central Florida, there was nothing. I didn't see anything. It was crazy. Yeah, I think, Dalton, you you yourself could stand in front of the phone cannon, and it's not going to do anything for you because the pressure it puts out is not that hard. You're, you could I could phone cannon you from you know, you know three feet away, and it would just be like you're getting hit with the hose, and that would be about it. You're not going to be like, oh, it hurts, you know, that guy kind of thing. You don't – you don't really get the pressure where it's stripping off the like the dirt and the paint until you're like, you know, six inches away or less. That's when it really starts stripping stuff. So you always keep the pressure washer away or especially don't put the, that higher end pressure nozzle on it. Which of your radar detectors do you feel is the best? Right now, movie fan, the current best radar detector on the market, and it's been tested by many, many, many detectors, and they actually test it. In the, it's called the Texas Radar Detector Shootout. They host it every year. You'll have like 20 or 30 uh, radar detecting guys. They all get gather in Texas and they tested it like off axis, which means the road's going this way and the cop will be sitting sideways. And then they test it on head on and they'll test it like they're back here. So after you go by, then they're going to shoot the back of your car with it. But the, the number one radar detector on the market right now is the unit in R1 and R3. The only difference between the R1 and the R3 is the R3 has a GPS in, unit in it and the R1 doesn't. That's the only difference. So basically the R3, you'll know where speed cameras are. It'll tell you where red light cameras are. Um, anytime you get like, let's see near a CVS or Walgreens, it'll, you know, how it starts chirping off on you. If you hit the mute button twice, it'll automatically GPS lock it out within a certain amount of distance and that will never set off again. It's really, really cool, but it is by far the best. Like I use that in my prelude. It tells you the miles per hour and everything because it uses GPS and um, I drive with it. And uh, I've, I've picked up cops from, we're talking like three, four miles out in a straight line. It's just ridiculous how much better it is than any other detector on the market right now. It's $399 for the unit in R3 or $299 for the R1. But I highly recommend the R3 just because of the fact that it has the GPS lockouts in it. You'll know where the red light cameras are if you're in a new area. Um, all that extra bells and whistles, which is really nice for the extra $100. Uh, hi, mate. Sorry if you wouldn't answer this, but would there be a cheapo hose a foam cannon work better with a dedicated foam cannon wash? Um, I, I've tried it in different stuff, and it really didn't make a difference. As long as the soap 
was made for the foam cannon, it won't be any problem at all. Like the Adams foam cannon is foam soap is made for it. Uh, what else? Uh, some of the chemical guys, ones that aren't specifically their snow foam, like their this is their snow foam, one of their snow foam, and they work just fine in it. Obviously, you guys got to see uh, Limitless Car Care. That that stuff's amazing, by the way. Probably some of the best car wash there is in the market right now is is right up there. Probably. It's between that and Wax Gods all day long. Limitless Car Care and Wax Gods. The cool thing about Limitless is it's actually uh, formulated for use in the foam can as well as a two bucket method. So that's why I just love that product. Absolutely love Limitless Car Care. Great stuff. Uh, what's up, Racer Judge? How you doing, buddy? Just Chad, a quick swax in Mother Spray Wax are very close. What? I haven't tested that out, Alex. I'll be glad to try that out. I understand it. I had a lot of people asking about that, Alex. Uh, what Alex is talking about is he wants me to put McGuire's ultimate spray wax up against turtle wax, ice spray wax. The turtle wax, ice spray wax is stellar, absolutely stellar. So it should be a really, really solid, uh, pairing as in for a good, um, heads up competition for you guys to see. Do you apply wax on your bikes? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, David, I actually, on my, um, my Honda Grom, I, I fully detailed it out and I actually use all of Masterson's product on it. Masterson's car care and I used his Masterson's paint sealant on it. And then after it cured, I put on a uh, Masterson's Carnuba wax on top of that. And dude, it, that thing pops son. that pops so good. Did that bright yellow. So yes, I definitely wax some stuff. My, uh, all my bikes. Um, so Gian, Gian, I was going to a uh, cam center, uh, but matter of fact, I was going to try their, um, uh, their quartz. But anyways, I had a lot. I had a discussion on my Facebook page and on my um, Instagram, and everybody told me they wanted to see Car Pro C Quartz UK 3.0, which is the brand new ceramic coating. That's what's going on my GTR. So hopefully this weekend, this Saturday, I'll be able to get up and do because uh, I have to polish and compound the GTR. I have to clay bar the GTR, and then I can actually apply the C Quartz to it. So that should be a really, really fun video for you guys. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to do all that stuff. Thank God you only have to do it about once a year, call, compound and polish your car, so we should be good. And hopefully I can have that ceramic coating video out sometime in a week after that. You know, I'm usually like a week behind. So I make the videos, and about a week later is when you actually see the actual review on it. Do you miss the errors from the V1? Uh, no, not at all. The, the V1 it stays in my GTR. Just let you know, movie fan. The, so the V1 stays in my GTR. Uh, the unit in R3 is in my Blue Prelude. Uh, my escort red line is in my wife's minivan, which obviously we used the entire time this whole trip, by the way, that thing was, that thing, that thing was the best radar detector in the world until the unit in R3 came out. Nothing could touch it in long distance. Now the, the escort red line came out around 2011, 2012, maybe sometime around there. And it didn't have like GPS lockouts. It didn't have a Jeep. doesn't have a GPS chip in it. Just it, the technology is obviously taking huge leaps and bounds. Now it still detects cops two or three miles out. If you're in a straight line. But uh, the unit in still just trounces it. It's it's unbelievable when you saw the test results. Like they break it down, they they'll test it like six times different directions. I mean, just if you go to their websites and you get to see the breakdown, it's pretty nuts how bad it was beating down every other radar detector out there. Well, doesn't mean your cops could jam the radar. Um, cops don't jam radar. Uh, either cops use radar or they'll they're starting to use laser depending on where they're at. And for a laser, you'd have to have a laser jammer. Uh, a radar detector will only detect that there's laser, but it's not going to warn you in time. A laser is as soon as they hit you, they instantly know how fast you're going. Where the radar, it's kind of uses so it's a pulse that goes out like this, so they can hit three cars at one time, and until you're within a certain distance, they don't know exactly that it's you that's speeding. So uh, where a laser, as soon as they hit you, it's over. They know immediately how fast you're going because they can just pinpoint you on you. Where the radar, like I said, spreads out like this. So they don't know exactly who it is until you're right up on them. And that's the way it works. So you need to have a laser. If you're in an area that all uses laser, you need to get invest into laser jammers. Uh, just to cleaner play wax. Yeah, the cleaner, uh, cleaner spray wax. Yeah, I have the stuff. They've sent me all their stuff. I just haven't trusted all their new 2018 products. So they've uh, updated a lot of their products as well. Uh, Mother Speed. Uh, wax versus griots. Yeah, that could be a fun one too. Adam's glass boost. Uh, glass boost. Here's the thing with uh, Donsky. I uh, I see so many glass cleaners that are almost the same. To tell you the truth, I'll be real with you guys. 
most glass cleaners I try work. Just make sure they're automotive, so they're safe on your tent. But I don't see a massive difference. The only ones I see difference are, or when the ones that come with some type of rain repellent in it as well. So they'll have a little bit of um, hydrophobic coating inside of it as well. But other than that, I I don't see any huge difference between glass cleaners. Stoner is really up there with the best on our visible glass, uh, but there's a few out there that will also have it. Now, Stoner has a product you're going to see on Tuesday. They sent me a giant five-gallon bucket. Uh, they're going to start selling it, everything. you So you would order straight from their website, and it comes with a – it's a it's a glass cleaner plus water repellent. I forgot what that actual name is, but essentially it's like a rain -X in the spray can. So you clean your windows, and it adds like a layer of basically uh, rain -X on your windshield, which is really, really cool. I don't have the white prelude back yet. No venom. Uh, they actually did move it. I we went by it the other day. Can you review any? Uh, I do have the 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 helmet cleaner, but from what I tell can tell, they're all just rebottled. You know how chemical guys. If you guys don't know, chemical guys rebottles many of their products, changes the color, changes the scent, and they rename it something else. So it's a lot of the same stuff, and so um, you kind of get confused into what's what. You kind of got to feel through it, and like uh uh, but. For real though, on the motorcycle stuff, most of that stuff is just the regular products that have been made as a motorcycle brand line. Do you expect good results from eco-friendly products compared to the, uh, I don't really, the eco stuff, I mean, if, let's put it this way, if it's too aggressive, it's going to ruin your paint, so it's not going to be sold anyways. So I don't see any real difference, and I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me one way or another if I was going to try eco versus something else, because it's just like, you know, too aggressive is going to ruin your paint anyways. Hey, Jack, quick question for you. What do you recommend for engine detailing to look show ready? You're going to need a degreaser, Giovanni. Um, I have two videos. You're going to have um, – I have a Chemical Guys orange degreaser, if you want to go back and look. So write that down, Chemical Guys orange degreaser video, plus a Masterson's uh, degreaser. I have two of those. So I dilute it down because they come in concentrated bottles, so dilute it down in a spray bottle. And you'll see you want to you want to cover the engine for any electrical stuff like your fuse boxes, alternator. Get like a cheap old Walmart plastic bag and, and wrap that stuff up so no water and nothing gets into those kind of two parts. Uh, any electrical stuff that would be like that. So your exposed alternator or especially your fuse box. So you can wrap them up really good. And then you want to you just basically soak down the engine with a degreaser. I mean soak it down. You get a brush and just kind of uh, you know get a, a soft bristle brush. And just go through the whole engine so it won't scratch up the engine bait or anything like that just a really soft one and then you just kind of spray it down it's, it's it's really crazy how cool it is and it works really good and then you can just get in there with a small horsehair brush and really get into the tiny cracks area and you'll see on those both those videos i clean up both of my preludes and they just go from nasty to holy cow when you see them will you still uh will you still get swirls marks yeah you can definitely get them dalton they're, they're obviously gonna be a little bit harder to get but you can definitely still instill them if you if you uh do something wrong or you, you let's say you pick up your mid off the ground like oh shit i dropped it on the ground pick it up and then put it on your car's paint yeah you can still instill swirls with it um ah jonathan ah uh you're going to really like c quartz uk no synthetic look uh martha so it's the synthetic it's the uk C Quartz UK 3.0, which is a brand new for 2018. So that is what's going to be on there. Uh, rare detectors are legal in Victoria, Australia. Only if they know you have it. And I'm telling you, the only thing that can detect radars is called the Spectre. And all the high-end radar detectors are invisible to them. So your Unidins are invisible. Your, your Escorts are invisible to it. <laughs> that What's the other word? Denso has some that are invisible to it. You just got to go. There's a, there's a great YouTube channel on, on radar detectors. It's, it's called Vortex Radar, B-O-R-T-E-X, Vortex Radar. And he has a lot of these where he actually, he has he has all the radars. He has the Spectre radar detector detectors. And he'll put the radar detector right up against the windshield, and it won't even go off. It's so in, so if you have to get the higher end ones, like the unit in R3, and uh, it it's undetectable, completely undetectable. It's the craziest thing. He actually shows you. He'll drive down the interstate. And he'll use it like the cops do and kind of try and point which direction it is. And that's how they – he shows you how they find if you have a radar detector or not. But here in the United States, it's only Washington, D.C., Virginia, and I want to say it's Maryland. Maybe that's illegal, but every other state is legal. You're allowed to have them. No big deal. Uh, yeah, you, 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 as long as you get out of the way, Dalton, and don't, don't sit in that, that don't sit in the fast lane going, oh, I'm doing 70 miles an hour. Everybody should slow down behind me. I'm telling you today and yesterday on the way up to Jacksonville, I think our average speed was somewhere around 84 to 85 miles an hour in the minivan. 
everybody was hauling ass on 90, 95 and interstate four all the way over to 95 by daytona and then you go up from daytona to jacksonville dude everybody was speeding the entire way we were hauling ass i don't know about harbor freight stuff the pressure washer buddy sorry man hardest job I've ever had i don't know i used to mow i mowed yards when i was a young kid and then obviously so obviously being out in the heat sucks i work at a shipping company for the last 20 years um that's just the way it goes, you know, in the warehouse, there's no air conditioning in the warehouse, obviously. So you just either, you just get used to it, you know, the fans they have. And, you know, unless you're within 10 feet of the fan, you don't feel the fan. It's just the way it goes. Uh, yeah. Invisible glass of water repellent. That's it, money. She doesn't keep the minivan clean. Uh, yeah, she wouldn't. She wouldn't, Dalton, at all. Purple power for engines. Uh, don't use pressure washer on the engine. It can damage sensitive parts. That's what Dalton always sees. Just use the degreaser. Soak that sucker down. And then use a like a horsehair brush, like the big ones. It just kind of like you'll see it like agitated it all up there. And then just use a regular hose, but make sure you cover it. Oh, 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 oh. Well, look who's here. Look who's here. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. hi. Say hi. No, I have to stay up here. Go bug mommy. Go bug mommy. See, this is what he does. He, he grabs me and tries to pull me away. No, Nathan. Go to mommy. Go to mommy. I'm going to have to text his mom. Be like, mom, come get him. Go to mommy. Go to mommy. There, he's gone. He's gone. Never mind. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, what if an air filter in a carburetor? Anything, Jared, that you'd be worried about, that water would get in there and ruin it, you cover it. Get a plastic trash bag. Uh, those Walmart bags, anything like that, cover anything that you'd be worried about. So your fuse boxes, your alternators, anything that you'd be paranoid that water would get in there and ruin it, cover it, cover it, cover it. And other than that, you'll be fine. Because remember, the engine is made to get wet. I mean, underneath the engine is nothing, just the ground. So water is getting splattered up when you're you know, driving on a rainy day. It doesn't affect anything. You just don't want to have anything possibly get in there and ruin it. So if you to cover your ass, you always put plastic bags over it. Um... I want to try paint correction myself. Nothing serious, just come with minor swirls. Uh, what would you recommend to use? A uh, buffer, definitely a dual action buffer. One of the best newbie to intermediate buffers I have is the Griot's Garage 6-inch DA polisher. Basically, if you put too much pressure down on the DA polisher, it will automatically stop spinning. So it won't spin and just grind into your paint. So if you put too much pressure, it just stops moving. It just stops because it realizes that you're doing something wrong. You're putting down too much pressure. So you can't screw up anything with the DA pol those DA polishers. It's really, really nice. A Griot's Garage 6-inch DA polisher runs about $150. Lifetime warranty on them for as long as you own the product. It is just a solid all-around company, and uh, I've never had any issues with it. I've had it for like five years now, and just solid. works every time. Honestly, just starting yourself in a small two-by-two-foot two -foot section about that much. And you just kind of work back in patterns, back in the crosshatch pattern. Once you get to the top, now start going up and down. Do that three, four times, pull it off, wipe it off, and then see if you need to do another layer or not. You know, go back and hit it again, or do you go ahead and move on to the next uh, uh, part of the actual car? You have to go, have to be up early for work. Uh, Martha, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. It's been a little while since we've seen you out here. Uh, versus Adams polishes. Um, maybe I can do that for you for sure. Again, I've recently, I've just started doing a lot more of those comparison videos for you guys. And, uh, apparently a lot of you guys like them. They usually get about 2,500 views on them in a week. And so that's pretty good. You know, it's a little off day video to do like heads up competition videos. And a lot of people say they really, really like those. And, uh, so as long as people are asking for them, I'll keep making it, you know, Hey, you guys going to watch it. That's cool. That's all, all that matters in the end. Uh, is there a certain technique? I actually, there's a lot of good professional, uh, guys out there that'll show you the tips. I have a couple, I have a, a how to polish video if you want to see it, but I'm telling you guys like uh, your Larry will teach you Larry from my ammo, uh, auto geeks, Mike Phillips. He has a really good videos on how to polish if in case my videos aren't like cut and dry enough, how to do it properly. Basically put about four to five, uh, pea sized drops of, um, polish or compound on your uh, pad. Uh, if it's if it's a new pad, you might want to uh, hit it with a detailer first, just kind of like uh, get a little bit moist first, like one or two squirts. Put it in a section. You know, you kind of dab it around a little bit. You know, spread it out in that little two cent section, and then just slowly turn it on. Just kind of spread it out, and then crank it up to about five, and just go back and forth like a nice speed like this, back and forth. And that's about it. You don't have to go any faster than that. You don't have to go any slower. And then once you get to the bottom, then you start going up 
and down. That's all. That's literally all it is. And uh, you do that about four passes. Turn it off, pull it off, and wipe it down. There's all. There's all there is to polishing. It is so simple. It's so easy. But a lot of people are scared about it, and that's why these deep, these professional detailers that comes to your house charge hundreds of dollars because they know they're going to spend hours on it, and they can really, really make in some fast money off of you doing that. Uh, make it R1. There are no red light cameras where I live. Uh, there, there was a good thing there wasn't any red light cameras around Jacksonville uh, because God, we ran so many lights today on the motorcycles. I just when, when there was almost 300 motorcycles today, I'm not lying. It was just nuts. There was almost 300. So every intersection, you know, by the time one went green, I mean, you still have you know 200 bikes behind you. So what they would do is they have guys that run up and block the intersections so that nobody can turn into the, into the flow of us. And then everybody just keeps going. So we ran probably 50 red lights today. It was nuts. <laughs> Good thing they didn't have it. Puerto Rico is in the house right here to Juan. It's called Kissimmee, Florida. If you don't know about it, you're not from Puerto Rico. I'm telling you right now, Juan. Kissimmee, Puerto Rico right here. Uh, Grizz posture will be fine. Hi, what's up, Dosky? Uh, it's a little man. Yeah, he just took off and went downstairs. Have you almost ever crashed? Um in the motorcycle or in my car that i don't know i have a hyper tough pressure washer from walmart's electric yeah dude it works fine exactly as long as it gets done like uh, a ryobi one is a really good brand too that you can pick up for uh, rather cheap if you only need it for a foam cannon or just basic stuff and you don't need the heavy power get one of those electrics don't spend a lot of money guys you're not doing this for a living you're doing it just for hobbyist detailing you don't need more than that don't blow your crazy money on it now if chemical guys made a pressure washer, it would be $500. I'm telling you right now, that's how they would charge it. But you don't need it. Just a simple electric pressure washer is all you'll ever need, just for basic foam cannon and stuff like that. Doc's in the house. Yeah, Doc's, Doc's downstairs right now. She's in the master bedroom working, painting her fingernails. So, yeah, the Doc is in the house right now, too. How you doing, Doc? So, I see. Can you get swirl marks uh, from, a, from a polisher? No, but sometimes improper stuff and sometimes leave a little bit of uh oh god what's it called like uh holograms and you'll see these little trails right these little trails like uh that you have to get out so then you have to come back with a polish and get it all out again sometimes co uh, compounds will do that i've seen it a lot before so you have to sometimes come back with a polish after you've compounded the car then come back with a polish to get out just the fine any issues that the compound uh, might have done to it but with the orange aggressive pad come back with a uh, polishing pad and just the actual uh, polish and you will be able to really make it just look amazing after that and then you can do what you want you can put wax on it sealing on it or ceramic coating whatever you want but uh it's worth it uh every contaminant uh if you ever do if you do it wrong use a contaminated pad uh what up bro what up adam how you doing buddy aqua glow uh i don't know what that is what's your number one wax right now as far as shine and durability Ooh, see, that's really hard because I, I personally am starting to feel a lot more uh, a love towards sealants because sealants last almost an entire year. And you from the once the sealant's on there, then you can put a, a car nuva wax on top to give it that rich glow and extra protection. Um, car nuva, uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. My favorite car nuva wax right now is Pinnacle Sovereign. It's amazing. It's expensive as hell, but it's it's really really amazing. Uh, top end stuff. Um, what else would I say? Meguiar's Ultimate is good for a synthetic wax. It'll last you about five to six months. Uh, Turtle Wax Ice lasted me five or six months. It's solid. It's a little bit harder to get now. It's not in Walmart anymore, but I think it's still in like AutoZone and stuff like that. Really solid product. What else have I seen that's just really top notch that uh, you can get over the counter? I'm trying to think right now. My mind's getting blank right now. I'm drawing a blank. I'm sorry. But honestly, sealants are kind of the future uh, synthetic, they last you about 10 to 12 months before they finally fade off. I've personally had it in my wife's minivan. I had Masterson's shield sealant and that car, that van sits outside every single day in the Florida sun. And it lasted a full 10 months before it started to fade. Very, very impressed with theirs. And I guarantee you, if it was in the garage every night, I don't think it, I think it would have lasted it in full 12 months or longer, but, uh, it was a great way to test it out. So uh, I like sealants. So that means less work for me over the years when I only have to apply it one time for, Versus every couple of months, I have to apply a wax. Any idea how to remove? Um, I have never had to remove it. I think it usually fades off on its own. I am maybe some kind of uh, 
uh, what's it called? Wax in what you call it remover would probably do it. We're like compounding or uh, polishing a prior remove as well. Uh, would it be safe to spray my a engine air filter in an interior? The engine air filter with interior scent. Wait, I feel like I grew. Um, I now movie fan. You know, some people for most newer cars, you have an engine air filter, but you also have a um. God, it, it's it's an interior cabin. It's a cabin filter. Okay, and it's usually behind your glove box. So you lower down the glove box and you pull it out there. A lot of people, what they do for the one that's the um, the one in the car, they spray that one down and then they put it back in because that's where the air is being filtered through from your air conditioner. The engine one, no, it'd be it'd be pointless because <laughs> for you to spray the one in the engine, that'd be just silly because that all that air is going into the engine. It's not going into your uh, air conditioning unit. So if you have a car that has a uh, in cabin air filter. You can pull that one out and spray that one down, but don't do the one in the engine at all. No. Painting her nails because I would probably screw up her nails. When I got the GT350R, I had a dealer detail washing. Oh, God. Omar. I'll give you an example. My wife's old Hyundai Tucson. We took it to do its basic oil change, and I told them, do not wash it. I walked around back, and they were doing this with a brush. When they rolled that thing around back, it had so many swirls in it. I was furious at them. And I told them, I told you don't do it. And they said, I said your guys are going to correct this now. Your your paint crew is going to correct this. There was so many swirls in that paint. It would look, it was completely spotless before. And it had swirls everywhere. They were using these brushes like this at the dealer to clean the cars. And I was furious because it took, I did hours to do to make sure that it was in good shape. And I put wax on it and they just instilled swirls everywhere. I was so mad. Uh, I tried Adam's Ultra Foam uh, Tough and meh, not enough cleaning power. Uh, or could paint his nails too. Uh, I could, but you know, I don't know if you guys would like that too much if I had painted fingernails. Um, can you do a wash on the white prelude? As soon as I get the white prelude back, I would love to. I would love to. I've done a lot of uh, washes on in the past. The poor paint though was starting to chip off on that car. It was resprayed around 2000. The previous owner told me it was resprayed around the 2000 by like just a Mako cheap paint. And you can see it that that paint job is starting to flake off now. So it's starting to be pretty crappy. It sucks. My son is acting a fool right now. I guess my wife locked him in. Like the, she locks the door to the, the, ba the bedroom. So she, he can he's probably raging. I can hear him screaming down there. I'll probably have to go save him in a minute. Um, also, then the Kroger. Uh, yeah, we don't have Kroger here. How about a Mother's Brazilian Carnival Wax? Uh, I've done it before, Dalton. It's really good. Do you golf? I used to golf. and that, I live in a country club. I live on the golf course, actually, as a matter of fact. Um, that The first hole is right behind my house. Like, right behind my um, our pool. is It goes, like, about 15, 20 feet out of my yard, and then it's the fairway comes through. So I live on the very first hole of the country club here. And I used to play, I played on the junior golf team and I played on the high school golf team. And I said, one day, I don't care what I had to do. I would live on a country club. And so when we got married, we bought this house and uh, it's gates. Like, as I said, I want to be gated with security and I want to be on the country club. So it's gated driving in my neighborhood is gated, you know, to go through security. And then um, I want to, I live on the country club. Our house gets hit by golf balls all the time, but you know, it's all good. What up, Accor? What's popping, man? I was just hanging out, dude, after a long, long day riding the motorcycles in Jacksonville, Florida. We just got back, and uh, now we're doing a quick live stream here, probably about an hour, hour and a half, and then I'm going to go take a shower and go crash. I am so tired. You guys don't know, but you guys don't understand. I made a promise that whatever I did when I made this YouTube channel, that I would always listen to my subscribers do my best to answer every single comment. Now I understand when these guys have, you know, three or 400,000 subscribers, they can't answer every comment, but do the best I can for as long as I can. And uh, if I get to spend, you know, an hour or two with you a week, I will do it. So that's why I love doing this stuff for you. And it's been, it's always fun. I love getting to talk to you guys. It's a great way for me just to relax on a Sunday and you guys can just shoot the questions again, just being the hobbyist guy I am, I can give you a decent idea of stuff, but that's why I'm, I'm totally okay. Look, Go check out Larry's stuff. Go check out Auto Geeks. There's so many good professional ones that you can learn the best tips and tricks from. And then now take it to Mothers or any other company that you're personally going to buy because you maybe don't want to buy the Auto Geek stuff. Maybe you don't want to buy Larry's Ammo NYC or Adams and Adams Polishes or whatever. And you just want to learn the tips. He, he'll, those, these guys will give you some very high end tips and you can learn a lot from these guys. I have no problem with people going elsewhere. I'm not trying to be the number one 
YouTube detailing channel. I'll never be that. I do. We do this as hobbyists for fun. We take care of our own cars, and that's the way we do it. It's fun. Uh, do you ever going to go to a detail GRG Sarasota? And I don't even know what that is, Vincente. Uh, did they actually correct it? Um, I don't remember, Dalton. I just was kind of mad at the time. No, because it was in Jacksonville, Florida. We had to take it in Jacksonville, Florida, so that's why. Where in Jacksonville? Uh, we were on the south side is where we met. It was a uh, you, you know the, you guys know those uh, indoor electric golf go karts, the electric ones that are really fast. Well, that's where that's who hosted it on their back thing. My son is going nuts. He's pr I'm probably gonna have to take a couple minute walk out, guys. Just letting you guys know, he is just bawling right now, and he's coming up here. He's gonna drive me nuts. Uh, let me text my wife. <sighs> You're going to have to get him there. I text her because <laughs> I know he, unless she's painting her nails and I can't help it. But he he if he blows up on me, I'll have to like take him downstairs. Come say hi to everybody. Come say hi to everybody. See, he's he's not in a good mood right now. This is a problem. I tried wax got soap and it sucked for the foams died so fast. Uh, Daniel, to make sure you're using the right foam thing, because I, I have never had a problem with them. No, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> this is what it's like. If you guys don't have kids yet, this is what it's like. Right here. Right here. You don't do what they want, they're going to scream and cry all day long. Love the live stream. Thanks, Street Cat. Appreciate it. Hey, Chad, thank you for this channel. Yeah, for sure, Omar. I, we love doing it. Here. Come say hi to everybody. All right. All right. All right. You got you to gotta go downstairs. Go to mommy. Go to mommy. Go to mom. Go downstairs to mama. No, go downstairs to mama. This is what you deal with, guys, right here. Go downstairs. Go to mama. Go to mama. <laughs> He's a happy camper tonight. If you don't use on drive meth, she means Nathan, you got to go downstairs. <laughs> guys, give me two minutes. I'm going to have to walk him downstairs. If anybody comes in, let them know where I went. Hold on. Come on, Nathan. Come on. <laughs> Where's your iPad? Where's your iPad? So you can watch some stuff. Where's your iPad? Watch your iPad? All right, come back, guys. Come back. Sorry. <sighs> Do apologize. 
All right, sorry about that, y'all. I do apologize about that. Yeah, all that's Nathan stuff. He brings it in. That's from Mardi Gras Parade up there. I say about the stuff. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, my son was having a complete meltdown. So sure enough, my wife locked him in the kitchen so he couldn't go on that side of the house. And he could only stay over here on this side. So I gave him the iPad so he can watch YouTube kids. And that's what he likes to do. Uh, what's up, David? I see you up in here. Um, uh, Audubon. Yep, that there it is, Jared. That's exactly where we went. They... Um, they uh, hosted the event in the back, so all the little groms and stuff are like popping wheelies the whole time. And then we left from there and went all around Jacksonville today. So it's pretty crazy. Uh, let me read all this stuff. Uh, San Antonio, uh, cool. Uh, how did I get my paint? My really glossy, I'm fourteen year old pilot. The paint is decent. Okay, the biggest thing, Juho, is paint correction. You're probably going to need a polish in a compound. And once I'm telling you, you won't even need wax on it. And you're going to be like, holy crap, because it'll look really clear and really shiny again. I guarantee you there's a lot of swirls in it and probably a lot of scratches. When what that does is that uh, stops the light from having a pure straight in line to it and kind of refracts it. So it kind of makes the paint look very dull. But when you get rid of those swirls and scratches, now the paint is very clear again, like water you see all the way through. That's when it looks the best. And essentially, that's what you're doing. You have cloudy water versus, uh, you know, perfect still water and you can look right through. That's what you want. And then all you do is apply a paint protection like a wax or a sealant on there. And all you're doing is protecting it then. Nothing more. I used to buy Angel's Hat. Yes. Ugh. So I don't know if anybody here is from California here, but this is the Anaheim Angels. And this, what's special about this is, as you can see in the background, there's a sun, right? And then you see right here, that's what this is. I don't know if you guys know what flag this is, but um, this is the Philippines flag. So it's Filipino Pride Day at, at uh, Anaheim. When uh, we were at to the baseball game, it was about three years ago. Yeah, it was three years ago this fall. We went to the Angels game, and my wife is uh, half Filipino. And uh, if you know anything about Southern California, Filipinos everywhere there, and uh, they have Filipino Pride Day. So her whole family from the West Coast and everybody went there at Filipino Pride Day. We just happened to be there. We were going on a cruise to Mexico out of uh, Los Angeles down to that side of Mexico. And uh, so they all got us uh, tickets. They all got us angel shirts and they gave those hats away when we got to the stadium. So that's uh, why I have an angel's hat on and it's a Filipino one because my wife is half Filipino. So my son is a quarter Pino. He's one quarter Filipino. So there you go. I don't wear hats. So. That's I just I'm not a hat person at all. Uh, the white prelude has electrical problems. Something wrong with it. Uh, basically, it went to the first shop that I used to use all the time. He went out of business. So he had the car. He kept stalling on it, and the company went out of business. Well, the new guy that, that uh, took over the shop, he said he was going to fix it. He was going to fix it. He was going to fix it. And, uh, he, so I'd go back three weeks later and check. I'm like, and he, oh, I just got the part in. I'm like, you told me the same excuse three weeks ago. I said, you have until the end of this week to get the car fixed or I'm towing it away from here. Cause you're, you don't want the work clearly. The, the thing is down here in Kissimmee, very, people are very lazy in Kissimmee. A lot of people say, well, I already got enough work. I don't want any hard jobs unless it's an easy plug and play type of thing. They don't want it. I'm talking even with screen repair around the pool. We've gone to four different screen repairmen because they will work one day and then you call them back six months later, or a year later. Hey, I've got a couple more screens knocked out and I need them to be replaced. And they, they say, no, they're not coming out unless unless we're going to rescreen the entire screen pool. They don't want to do the job for just two or three screens. You're like, why would I replace the entire pool for a thousand dollars or whatever? Rescreen the entire place when I only need two or three screw screens replaced. So the same thing is like going with cars. These people are so lazy unless they have a super simple job. They don't want it or a job, you know, so they just keep pushing my stuff off. And basically that's what happened. It's some kind of electrical problem. As I put a brand new battery in it and everything from Honda because I had a warranty. It'll start, but it would drain. It was draining the battery. And they said the alternator was fine. The, they were testing it, everything. It's something electrical in it. <sighs> Ooh, blue pearl. I bet that would be pretty blue on a black paint. Car is my favorite. My, obviously, my GTR is my favorite. The most sentimental car I have, though, is my blue prelude. I bought that in 2006. I was uh, living in Pensacola, Florida, and uh, when I was just dating my wife, um, 
we both went together. She went with me to the bank and I got the loan. She just happened to be in town visiting me between her med school training. And uh, I, we got the loan. And so I've, I've taken that car to the Florida Keys. I've driven it to Texas. I've been to uh, New York with it. I've been to Illinois with it. I've been to Canada with that car. That car has been everywhere with me. So I've had it for 12 years now. So it's really hard for me to let that car go. That's why I've been spending money just to have it in really good shape and to swap out the transmission stuff. My wife was like, you're spending over $1,000. I'm like, yeah, and a normal transmission job would have cost me over $1,000. Well, there you go, Matthew. Um, my wife's aunt lives about five blocks away from Disneyland. So if you walk out of her townhouses and you look to the right, you can see the wall of Disneyland. That's exactly how close she is to it. So it's like I said, it's about five blocks away from Disneyland. You can see the big giant wall. So when we stayed there, that we stayed there one or one or two nights, I think we stayed there. So we went on the cruise. We went to the, then we came back and I think we went to the Angels game when we got back that night. And then we flew back the next day or two after that. And we went around to LA, we went to Hollywood, we went to Griffith Observatory, and we went to, they took us around like, uh, what is it, Pacific Coast Highway down there. Because we took the cruise out of um, Long Beach, the port of Long Beach. So we took the cruise out of there. And um, so went on the Carnival of Miracle. We went to like uh, Cabo San Lucas, uh, Mazatlan, Mexico, uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and somewhere else. It's up four different places. And so we went down the west, the other side, the Pacific side of uh, Mexico. It was really cool. I'd never been on that side before. It's way different than the, the, the Gulf of Mexico side. It's really a lot different. Scorpio Carlo, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> What is all the cars you have? I own 200 Preludes. The Toyota Sienna is my wife's, and I own the Nissan GTR as well. And then I have the two motorcycles. I have a Honda Grom and a Kawasaki ZX6R. Uh, I ran a 4.6. Okay, I don't know where we came from on that. For focus is a... Mm. Did you guys see that all Ford Ford is getting rid of all of their cars? I think it's the stupidest idea they ever did, but Ford is not going to make any more cars besides the Ford Mustang. They're, they're going to cancel all of their cars and just concentrate on SUVs and trucks. It, to me, that's dumb because for me personally, I have no desire to have an SUV. Uh, I like cars personally myself better. I think, uh, especially when it comes to like luxury cars, I think they're better all around. Uh, and not like I was going to go buy a Ford or anything, just, go, just throwing that out there. I was going to go buy a Ford. But the fact is, it's like, um, you know, why would you kill every one of your cars uh, besides the Mustang? Because they say, well, the sales, everybody wants SUVs. And what happens when the next gas crisis hits, when gas hits $5 a gallon out in California? Do you think they're going to want those SUVs that are only getting 20 miles a gallon or 15 miles a gallon? Hell no. We'll be screaming at Ford. Why don't you have a car making 40 or 50 miles a gallon? You know, because you guys weren't buying it. So it's, it's a stupid decision on their part. Maybe cut down on how many cars they make, but still make some cars. What's up, Nathan? How you doing, man? Tons of Kimmel Guys uh, products to try out. Looking forward to trying Mother's 2.0 clay. Definitely will be trying that soon for sure. I'm going to take Kimmel Guys stripper scent to the strip club. Uh, I don't think it smells the same. Just I'm just going to throw that out there. Just going to throw that out there. I don't think it smells the same. Um... And if I were a master's that opens up, you'll have to come. Now, I Matthew, I told him I would definitely fly out there. I think he's saying July is what they're shooting at. I'm going to have to work. I'm going to have to check on things because we're going on a cruise in June again. Yes, we're going on another cruise in June, guys. Sorry, I cruise a lot with my family. Every Almost every vacation we take, we go on a cruise ship. So we're going on another cruise in June. We went on one in March. You guys know. I'll be going on another cruise. But we're going on a New York City. I don't know if anybody here is from New York. Anybody from New York, maybe Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Bronx, but I'll be going out of New York City and we'll be going to Bermuda. So it's a seven day cruise, two days there and then three days in Bermuda and then it goes comes back two days. So I'll be going to New York in June, New York, and then I can be a little bit douchey because we can be like New Yorkers. Uh we're going to the same route Dodge did years ago. Bad idea. Yep, for sure. For, yeah, I, I don't know. Everybody's buying SUVs, but the thing is not everybody wants an SUV. Me personally, I only tw only owe 26000 left on my GTR, and I know that sounds like a big number, but when you consider how expensive a GTR is, it's that's a small number in the uh, bigger scheme of things. I'm paying so much extra on my car every single month. 
I'm double in payments now, my GTR. All I want to do is pay the flipping thing off because I know I'm going to need a four door. I don't know if it's when it's going to be, but it's, it's going to be within the next year or two after paying off my GTR. So, but I want a car. I don't like, I'm not into that. The van is bigger and more room. Why wouldn't you just get a van? The van has way more room than the SUVs do. Uh, no shade in my new house. 2018 Texas truck, Texas sun. Best way is definitely going to be a sealant. You need to get a sealant on that, Rob. It'll be the best long-term protection for you, buddy. Thanks, Sean. I'll be on lookout. Uh, I think if gas prices stay that right. Um, I think electric cars are still too far out, Vincente, because you can't get between A to B on long-term roads without parking for hours. That's the limitation of electric cars right now. If electric car could go 1,000 miles or 500 miles on one charge, and it would only take you like 30 minutes to charge it back up again. Uh, I think it would be viable, but right now it's just, it, it's too long. If for anybody that's going to take a long distance trip, you, you can't rely on electric. New York. I'm going to be a douchebag when I get up there. I'm going to be gym tan laundry, like douchebag, one of those guys. It'll be epic. I can push people around and just be rude. Oh, it'll be epic. We have, There's so many New Yorkers that live here in Kissimmee, Florida. Mostly Brooklyn. Oh, they're so rude. You can see it. You can hear their accent. They're dickheads, man. I've never seen a place so rude in my life, so I'm going to be that now. I'm going to go to New York and be like, move out of the way, dicks. <laughs> It'll be fun. Uh, Bermuda, I don't know, Vincente. No, we're not rich. It's just that uh, she has a very good paying job. I've been with my company for 20 – it'll be 21 years in July I'll be with my company. I haven't quit. I have five weeks of vacation plus one week of option days to use every year. And I've only used one vacation this whole year. Every year it resets. They pay you out in December if you don't use it. So I will be using them all. So this will be my second one. Now we are, I asked for my birthday. So for my birthday present, I want a cruise that goes to Hawaii. So we have to fly to Hawaii and then go on a cruise around Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii before. And I said that would be um, my birthday present for me to, to go to Hawaii on a cruise. Uh, have you ever been to Denver? I've only flown into it and then flown right back out. My wife wants to go there. Two of her doctor friends from uh, medical residency school, um, they live in Parker, which is like a suburb in the south side of Denver, and they want us to come out there, and then they said they want us to like you know travel around. So I said maybe September or something we'll fly out there. We'll see, but I've never been other than flight, landing in Denver and getting on another plane and leaving again. I've never been to uh, – never actually stepped foot in Denver. Huskier Weather Tech. I don't know. I, I passed the Weather Tech uh, manufacturing plant up there in Chicago. I've been there. Street Cat is the Focus Active crossover, not the compact car focus. So, oh. have you ever met a fan in public? Uh, yes, I've had a couple of people see me in person and come up and talk to me. As a matter of fact, the funny thing is my motorcycle channel, which has like motorcycle part installs and reviews and just like moto vlogs where you're, I have the GoPro on my helmet riding around town. I must have had eight to 10 people come up to me, come up to me today and say, I know you from YouTube. I know your motorcycle from YouTube. Hey, what are you doing, man? I'm one of your subscribers. It was really cool. There was a lot of that today. And I mean, a lot of that. So that was actually really fun. And, uh, that's true. That's really cool. But as the car, I've only had maybe like three or four people ever come up to me in the car because it's, it's different. I guess it's more spread out where when you get, it's like, it would be like us going to a, a detail garage meeting. Like if I went to, um, one of the chemical guys detail garages open houses when they first start um i'd probably run into a lot more people that have seen my youtube videos than you know just a regular every day on the street here in kissimmee i've had people meet me at detail fest in uh south florida i've had me meet me at logan's roadhouse the, the restaurant they've come up to me and talked to me and they've met me at the gas station the 7-eleven gas stations they've met me at and they've said they've uh called me out and i'm like yeah that's me and they come talk to me so yeah i've, I've got called out a few times Getting out of Atlanta tomorrow, rat race, super bad. Uh, Jacksonville heading to St. George Island, my car. Yeah, uh, my wife, when she, for a year, she lived in Atlanta and she did her medical school clinicals there in Atlanta on the east side of town. So I forgot what she lived in. It was just out, it wasn't in Fulton. I forgot what she was in. She was literally right, as soon as you get on two, 285, was it, is it 285 or is it just 85? It's, it's, it's 85 going that way towards South Carolina. Uh, she was only like the first or second exit down. That's where she actually uh, rented a place at. If you guys know the Atlanta area really well. 
I used to have to drive up there. It was like every three weeks I would drive up to Atlanta. I put a lot of miles on that blue car, man. I'm telling you, when I've owned it for years. Thanks for the shout out. Looking forward to watch more. Nathan, you can always have a shout out on my channel, buddy. Well, always thinking about you. Um, what's your motorcycle channel? It's called Niche Riding. So it's N I C H E Riding, like you're riding a motorcycle. One word, Niche Riding. It has just over 5,000 something subscribers. Uh, it's not a big growing channel. I only upload maybe one or two videos a week there. It's just a small channel. I put out installs. Uh, I put out reviews of the bikes, minor things, a few moto vlogs out there, but most of my views all come from those uh, installs and reviews. Like Grom, the Honda Grom, they said for 2017 was the number one selling motorcycle in the United States by far. Their Honda Grom was because brand new, their MSRP is $3,200, somewhere around there, brand new. So yeah, that's why you have these massive groups that meet up and they pop wheelies with them. And uh, it's just their cheap little bikes to learn on and goof off with. Uh, I lived in Clearwater for a year and a half. And since uh, yes, I've been to Clearwater Beach. As a matter of fact, in April, I, I met up with the Tampa Grom squad and I, I, tr I took my Grom over there and uh, we, we rode all the way down Clearwater Beach to St. Pete Beach. And then we came back around. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, have you ever tried a battery powered vacuum for detailing? No, I just, I have one of those, uh, shop vacs and I just plug it in. Chad, sorry. I missed last like, no, lucky Brian. Hey dude, you gotta do what you gotta do. Like I said, again, I'll be on vacation in, I forgot when in June In June, I'll be on vacation. So we fly up to New York city on a Saturday morning. The cruise goes out on a Sunday afternoon out of New York city. Out of what is it called? Pier 88. And uh, it's called the Norwegian Escape. We're going to the Norwegian Escape to Bermuda. So I'll be gone that whole week. So I'll probably miss a live stream. I'll make sure you guys get videos, but I'll have to skip the entire live stream. Unless I do a live stream live from the ship as we're sailing out of New York Harbor. That could be a lot of fun. Uh, don't know. We'll see what happens. We got we to gotta set up my family. My family usually stays here. When we go on vacation. They use it as a vacation house. It kind of works out for them. So they get a vacation house and they just get to hang out in the pool and do whatever they want. Well, we're on vacation doing our own thing. So it works out really good. Uh, we'll watch rest tomorrow. I understand, buddy. Um, uh, bro, you need some leather across those uh, hardwood floors and some uh, bad girls in the back waiting. Those. Yeah, my wife would be pretty pissed. We have hardwood floors downstairs, though. Don't worry, Cody. We got It's all hardwood floors downstairs, bro. Um. Have you ever seen Turtle Wax's new handheld vacuum thing? No, I haven't, buddy. Night, man. Looking forward to new videos tomorrow. Thanks so much for stopping by, Tristan. How's the acceleration on the Sienna? Pretty stinking good. It's the, the the engine they use in the Sienna is the exact same engine that they use in the Toyota Tundra for their trucks. And so it's a 300 horsepower V6 engine. It has a lot of acceleration. I have raced many regular four door cars and beat them. It's so funny. You know, they think these four door cars are going to smoke a minivan. Don't. Flat on it, the Toyota Sienna has 300 horsepower. It gets up and goes. Oh, uh, once a Grom, but I'm 6'2". No, you'll look fine. Dude, I saw guys on the Grom today. They were probably six foot tall and 350 pounds. They were huge. They were huge boys on there. It was pretty funny. Favorite car care brand? Ooh, there's, the problem is there's so many, Jared. The ones I have been, haven't been disappointed with are most of the ones online. So you're... Limitless car care, wax gods. Who else have I tried that I've had zero issues with? Mothers makes a lot of good stuff. McGuire's makes a lot of good stuff. Um, what else? Adams have had, had some really good luck with Adams cars care. A little more expensive, but they've had some good luck with them. Masterson's is pretty good. What else have I tried that's really good out there? I'm trying to think. There's just so many companies out there, but probably those are some of the top ones that I could say that – Almost every one of the products will be great. Uh, I think uh, you'll like the movie 12 Strong. I've already seen it. I've already seen it. Um, uh, I would matter of fact, for a throwback lesson for you guys, I know I am I look young, guys, but I'm a lot older than what you think I am. When 9-11 happened, if you, you guys haven't seen the movie 12 Strong yet, it's about the 12 uh, – right, 12, they're like, I guess they were like Delta Force or uh, Green Berets, and they went into Afghanistan right after 9-11. They were the very first American forces in Afghanistan after 9-11. And uh, they were riding, literally riding in on horseback, attacking the, the Al-Qaeda and the Taliban there in the northern provinces of, uh, of Afghanistan. Anyways, um, 
during 9-11, I was actually in driver's training school, learning to be a delivery driver. I was actually in the class. I remember we were uh, driving around one of the brown trucks and, um, you know, just uh, they were telling you what you need to know and learn and all that stuff. So I was in the, the training class and the guy said, pull over. So he pulled over and he got it out. He said, my wife's on the phone. I got to take this phone call. It's really important. So we pulled over. We stopped. We waited. And um, so we were, we were sitting in there. He comes back into the truck. It's a converted truck. It's pretty cool. As many, it is like about six or seven seats in it. So you have six or seven guys learning to train at the same time. It's really cool. And uh, he gets in and we're all just goofing off, cutting off in the back. It's like a high school thing. It was really crazy, right? And uh, he just gets on and just he just gets mad. And everybody's like, everybody's kept talking. He just said, shut the up. And everybody's like, what the hell? You know, that kind of thing. It was like a manager, training manager. And he said, he's like, dude, some serious shit is going on. Uh, terrorism is just attacked. And he let everybody know that the, the Twin Towers were hit. He let them know the Pentagon was hit. Because we were in training all day long when that happened. Because we had to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning. So uh, we had no idea. So when we got back to the building, we actually turned on the TV and was actually watching everything. I'd never seen anything like it. And because it was in Jacksonville, Florida is where I was at at the time. You have a uh, Naval Air Station Jacksonville there. You had Cecil Airfield there. And you had uh, uh, Mayport, Naval Station Mayport, where the big crew, uh, the aircraft carriers and destroyers are based out of there in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, the whole day, man, you just saw fighter jets, everything doing this all day long. There was another plane in the sky, you know, because they grounded all the airplanes. Uh, and only military jets were up in the air constantly. It was the craziest thing. But that's a little bit of a throwback for you. It shows a little bit of my age. I'm not, I'm not like a 20-year-old kid anymore. Those days are way past because I was – I was 21, almost 22 when 9-11 hit. I remember a couple of guys from work uh, ended up going down to the military recruiter the next month and joined the military. It was kind of like a Pearl Harbor thing, you know, how right after Pearl Harbor, there was such a huge uh, influx of uh, people running down to the uh, recruiter to join the military. I still remember one of the guys I worked with, he went down there and became a combat medic in the army. And now he's back working and he's a driver now. But yeah, I remember for six years, he went as a combat medic and he served three tours over in Afghanistan and Iraq. So that was pretty crazy. Um, I think you're getting the 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 tundra. The tundra has a V6. Um, what's the best product for your black paint? Um, uh, products really don't matter. They're all about the same. It's about you're taking care of the paint. You want to make sure that you're getting rid of all the swirls and stuff because that's going to be your biggest thing. Swirls on a black paint make it look garbage. It makes makes it look really bad. So you really want to find some kind of way to polish out the swirls if you have them and then just put some nice wax or sealant on there. It's all you really need. Otherwise you treat it like a normal car, but for some reason blacks, black cars show off the most amount of swirls, the easiest by far. Uh, I can't get into my stripper scent. I thought I instead of the new car smell. Thanks for your reviews. Dude, anytime Cody, you know me. Selling companies would be sponsoring you. Um, they don't sponsor me, Cody. They just, most of those companies, they send me the products and they say, can you give us a, a review? Like uh, email me and let me know what we need to work on our products. And if you want to put out videos, you can. If not, don't worry about it. But basically they want to know what they should work on, whether I like the product. And basically they want me to write them a little message every time and, uh, you know, go from there. So it works out really good. As a matter of fact, Peter from Stoner Car Care is in Orlando for some kind of business meeting. I don't know what's going on. He said, he totally forgot that I lived right outside of Orlando in a suburb of Orlando. He said he would have definitely came by and we could have had a dual live stream here and he could have talked about all stoner car care products and stuff. It was really cool, but I, he, he totally said he totally forgot. I'm like, well, you're more than welcome to swing by. So he's a really good guy. Stoner car care. It's a smaller company on the stage, but they're slowly getting bigger. They're easy to find in your auto zone, advanced auto parts, stuff like that. But the only thing that right now they sell in Walmart is their invisible glass and their uh, windshield cleaner and stuff. So, they're really trying to get more headway into Walmart, but he said it's really hard, it's really hard. And they demand a certain amount of pay at a certain time of year. And they're, they act like no other business. They're kind of like the bullies on the block. You pay me now and then we'll give you your stuff later. It's really weird. He said, what car vac do I use? I use the, the Home Depot brand shop vac. Whatever the Home Depot brand shop vac is, that's what I have. It was like $40. It's excellent. Liquid waxes, again, that all comes down to what you want. Synthetics, uh, Meguiar's Ultimate is amazing. Uh, turtle wax, ice is amazing. Um, you can get carnival waxes that are really good. Meguiar's Gold Class, if you can find it, I like that a lot. Those are um, 
uh, what do you want to say? Uh, Mother's has a really good one. These are ones that you can easily find over the counter that you're really going to have good luck with. I would say seal your new car, CJ. Seal it's going to give you longer protection, and uh, you can go from there. Um, and then you can, from a sealant, you can put a wax on top of it. So you always put sealant first and then slap wax on it. But a sealant is going to last you far longer than any wax. So definitely put a sealant on it right away. Go get yourself some uh, either Chemical Guys Jet Seal, Masterson Shield Sealant, or Stoner's pa Paint Sealant. All three of those are really, really good, and they last you 10 months to a year. And then you can put some uh, carnauba wax on top. You'll really have good, good luck with it. Philip, Philip Phillips is in here. No, not really. As a matter of fact, Philip Phillips is from Albany, Georgia. Well, Leesburg, Georgia. I, I'm not into that kind of music, but I know he's from there. Stoner Car Care. Yes, sir. Stoner Car Care. When my cousin washed my dad's Camry, he hit the mid on the ground and made some good scratches in my paint. Did not work only a few days. Um, you, you're going to need a polish center or compound to get rid of those swirls. Oh, I am looking at electric pressure washer. What's the minimum? You probably need somewhere around 1,500 PSI, Jose. Probably around 1,500 to be safe. You don't want to go any lower than that, and you just kind of start risking where the pressure washer won't work properly or the foam can won't work properly. So I say 1,500 is a good number. 1,800 would be obviously better. 1,500 is a solid number. You should be able to get away with Every year, my school takes us uh, to 9-11 Memorial, uh, Memorial. Oh, again, I'm when I was a kid, we're, we're talking a long time ago. Again, I'm not I'm not a 15-year-old kid, guys. I'm not a 20-year-old kid, okay? I'm in my 30s, late 30s. Um, I, was, I went on top of the Twin Towers back in 1991. I was like 11 years old. And I went on the Twin Towers. I still have, uh, you guys know the, the pennies that you like crush, you know, you crank in it and it, it has those little, you just put pennies in there. I have two of them that have the Twin Towers thing on it. It's really cool. So when I was moving here, like I was packing up and I found them, I was like, holy crap, these things got to be worth a butt ton of money now because obviously you can't get that anymore. And with the, uh, the memories that are associated with it, it's like, that's something huge. It's not like just a company that went out of business. This is something huge. It was up there on their observation deck, you know, where you, you're up on the 110th floor of the Twin Towers and you're looking out. That's where the actual penny machine was. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, Home Depot shut back rigid. There you go. That's it, Cody. Thanks a lot for the help on that. I couldn't remember what it was called. Watched two semis today. No, God, I can only imagine. Lucky, I can only imagine. Uh, anytime, CJ. Anytime. No more Ranch Fritos this week? No, I'm actually out of Ranch Fritos. But I do have... Publix chocolate chip cookies, which are amazing, by the way. I don't. If you guys don't have Publix, it's rated like one of the number one supermarkets in the United States. It's it's usually either Publix or Wegmans. And I'm telling you, that's from coast to coast: California, Washington State, New York, Maine, all the way to Florida, and in between. The top two uh, supermarkets rated every single year is either Publix or Wegmans. They're very high end. They're classy. They're always clean. They're spotless. They're just everything about it is amazing. And, uh, man, they give you cookies. Like if you have a little kid, you just walk up to the bakery like, hey, can I have a cookie for my son? Sure. And they give you a cookie every time for free. Like no questions asked. Everything is on point with Publix. It's just so clean and classy. They're based out of Lakeland, Florida, which is like 45 minutes from me. But now they're they're starting to be like all over the southern United States, and they're just so nice. But a lot of you guys don't know about that. Again, the northerners know about Wegmans, and uh, Wegmans is kind of the same way. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Long as I've without washing it, probably about a month or so. Honestly, when when it was getting at Christmas, I used to go out and deliver. And uh, during those time of years, literally, you you live and die delivering packages. Okay, you have no life. You literally are there from the morning until the night. When you get home, all you do is go to fall asleep. So on the weekends, I would literally sleep, I'm not lying, between 12 and 14 hours a day on like Saturday, Sunday, just to catch up because Monday you'd be at it again. And Christmas is awful, awful for the delivery industry. And uh, so that was, it was probably between November and December of that year is probably why I just was like, screw it. I'm not even touching it. I'm just too damn tired. And that's what happens. Mm, Publix is amazing, man. Really good. Uh Yes, you can waterless wa uh, detail your uh, wheels and tires for sure, buddy. Uh, for the free cookies, yes. The free cookies is only for kids. Mm. 
one i've never actually used their stuff it's a little hard to find the the mirror bright line i've only ever found it in advanced auto parts or was it was it auto zone damn now i can't remind where anymore again it's been a while it's very hard to find this that that line but it's nothing more than uh, the Meguiar's uh, cleaner wax. Seriously. All it is is a cleaner wax, and that's it. So just go get the regular cleaner wax. If you need to help remove light swirls and stuff, it, it'll do you just fine. Mm. I wouldn't let anybody touch my car. Nobody would touch my car. When I bought the GTR last January... It literally took me seven hours to get out all the swirls and the scratches. Seven hours. Do you know how tired I was getting around that car? I literally had to take breaks. I was like, I'm done. I'm taking a break. That's why these pro detailers charge $1,000 when they see a car that's all trashed out. Or they you know, say you want ceramic on top of that. Well, now that's another $500. That's $1,500. And that's why they charge so much because they spend an entire day on your car and all the products they're using. So that's why they're charging $1,000, $1,500 to do this kind of stuff, but it was so bad that I'd never let anybody touch my car. Never. It would have to be a, pro a professional detailer that I can trust that I'd be like, Hey, that's fine. You can touch it. Mm -hmm. It is good guys. It is good. Thanks for reminding me, by the way. Thanks for reminding me. Hey man, hope you're doing well. I'm doing just fine. Just wrote a lot today. I'm sorry. I have my backpack on, right? And um, I'm riding with a backpack on and you had the weight like gate rates and stuff in it. Well, you know how it digs into your shoulders after a while. Well, imagine that after a couple hours of riding a motorcycle. My lower back was killing me. My shoulders were killing me. I was like, oh, it hurts so bad. I got to stop riding. But at least because I bought, I spent a lot of money. I, I got a custom seat for my Honda Grom. With shipping, it was like 420 bucks from Corbin. Corbin Industries, they make custom seats for motorcycles. And then that thing was so plush and so soft. It, so uh, my butt wasn't hurting this time, but... Oh my God. The last couple of times with a stock seat, it was so hard and so rigid. It was just like, this sucks. Mmm. No milk coach, no milk, just a Coca-Cola. It says, can you see it? I don't want to spill it out. It says coach on it. Pearl power car wash, possibly in the future. Dosky, give me a little bit of time, buddy. I'm trying to finish off the rest of the 2018 products. I'll be glad to do that for you in the future. Mm. Lucky, I, I like McGuire's Gold Class better. The suds always seem to last a lot longer. When you guys saw me use the, um, this yesterday's video, I only used McGuire's Gold Class, if you got to see. And it, it obviously suds up for days and days and days. It was really, really good. So I like the McGuire's Gold Class a little bit more. It doesn't give you the wax protection, but, you know, I don't care. I, the suds tend to die on the wax products faster than anything else. Mmm. Pooh Panda, I am so shocked at how many views that that this thing has. I didn't think it would get maybe a thousand, two thousand views in the first day. I looked when I got home; it has over four thousand views already in just a day. A, well, a day and a half now, right? Because I uploaded it yesterday after, afternoon, so something like that. I am shocked at how fast this thing already has over four thousand views. I'm going to do a head-to-head -head video on this, guys, versus the Chemical Guys Torque Foam Cannon, so we can see a good heads up. Definitely the quality is not there like the, the chemical guys torque foam cannon is, but the results are the same. So it should be a good head-to-head -head video. Um, if it's anything like the torque foam cannon versus the Amazon video I have, we should get a lot of views because that thing is, damn, that thing is putting out some good views. Mm. Best car under 100000 GTR. Easy. GTR. GTR is like $98,000. Buy a GTR all day long. The resale value stays around sixty to seventy thousand after it's like five or six years old. It's still sixty thousand, sixty something thousand dollars. It is a great car to buy if you want to hold your value. That's why I say buy used because let somebody else take that uh, original uh, hit. Under fifty thousand, you know that new Kia Stinger is doing really good, man. You know, what I, have you guys seen the new Stinger GT, the one that has the three hundred something horsepower V six in it? Uh, I have high hopes for that. I really do. I hope it really sells good because my plan is hoping, as you guys know, that as a Honda owner, that I hope Honda sees that, man, my Civic Type R is selling really good. What if we bring an Accord Type R over here because they got the Stinger GT? We could sell it for $42,000, $43,000 for an Accord Type R. I would buy one in a heartbeat. No questions asked. They're beautiful cars. 
tons of room in them. I would have no problem buying it in a core type R. Mm, Omar, don't, don't carry the uh, the gold class soap. Damn, that sucks. They don't carry gold class soap. You need to go somewhere else, man. I've never seen a Walmart that doesn't carry that. Adult, and as soon as I find it, I will definitely pick it up, buddy. I didn't have I We were in Walmart in Palm Coast, Florida, just north of uh, Daytona yesterday. But um, I didn't have a chance to go through the car section. I was just kind of like we were picking up a few things for my son, and that was it. New motor, two torque monster, drove yesterday, 35,000 is a bargain. Uh, Accord 2.0 no, manual. Yeah, see, in, Tom, I would love a manual Accord, but again, I would rather have a manual type R Honda Accord. And they can easily do it. They have all the parts, they already have the transmission manual transition. They already have the seat manufacturer who's making the Recaro seats or whatever they are for the um, the Civic Type R. Um, what else do you need? You a V6 engine maybe to get around 360 horsepower? They had a three six three uh, three point whatever liter V6 in the last generation Accord. Bring it over, turbocharge it, done. So it's not like these things have to be all new design. Then you just put a, a, a the body kit on it. You know, a small wing on the Honda Accord, call it a Type R. Done, solid. And so, I mean, that to me would be like done. Like, let me where where do I sign a check for that tomorrow? And seriously, I would. I, I'd let Honda contact me right now. If anybody works for Honda, you you contact them and say, hey, we got somebody right here that wouldn't. If it was forty three thousand dollars, I wouldn't even bat nine. I would buy it in a heartbeat because I know how rare the the Civic Type Rs are, and I know how good their resale value is, and I would buy one in a heartbeat. No questions asked. Calling Japan. Make it happen, Tom. Make it happen. I'm telling you right now, I would put a deposit down and I would wait. It happened to be in that, what is it? What do they call it? Aegean blue metallic. It's so beautiful. I saw one on an Accord today driving. It's so pretty. They have it on the Civic Type R's and they also have it. But just make it in that. I put the little red Type R on the bottom corner panel like they usually do. And uh, just just some bit, just some minor minor like body kit on it with a small wing on the back, nothing crazy like the Civic Type R, and have the V6 engine in it or like you know a 360 horsepower engine, the manual transmission. I'm there. I'm there. That's my dad mobile without bat and eye. Honda makes some good good transmissions. They're definitely amazing. Rural Kansas. And the nearest equivalent to a Kroger is an hour and a half away. You Lucky, why don't you just order the stuff online? I literally order stuff online all the time. When uh, one of the, I forgot who it was. It was it was Lewis, I think, that contacted me through uh, Facebook the other day. Sent me the link to Amazon's uh, chemical guys that was doing a sale on those nice, really nice microfiber towels they had. Six of them each for $12. So I bought two packs of those. And I bought the... The chemical guys um, microfiber uh, cleaner and it would only cost me like thirty dollars for all that I mean normally their microfiber towels are like three for twelve or three for thirteen dollars so to get six of them for twelve dude I bought them so I buy a lot of things online nowadays uh, get a v8 400 you know a lot of people Dalton say like oh, why don't you just get yourself a charger well, one, the reliability on American cars is garbage. As a matter of fact, they're some of the worst reliable cars is the Dodge. Dodge, Chrysler, Fiat, they're terrible reliability. Resale value is garbage on them, and they just they feel so plasticky and cheap inside compared to a Japanese car. Core type R will never sell well as a front-wheel drive. Uh, they would, they might change it up, though. you got to understand, you know, it. they would have a direct competitor with the um, uh, a Kia Stinger. So they they might have to change they might change it up to all wheel drive though. Think about it. If it was an all wheel drive type R, that that could be easily done there. Think about that, Cody, for a minute. Because if your your main competitor has the all wheel drive, which it does, or real wheel drive, you gotta compete. You absolutely have to compete. Early two thousands doesn't count. We're talking about now. Early early two thousands was almost two, two decades ago. Think about that. If you guys are older as, as I am, you think 2000 was like a couple years ago, you know, like five, 10 years ago, you think 2000 was. That was 18 years ago. 18 years ago. That is forever ago. I mean, you could be born in 2000 and already graduated high school already. Just think of it. Let that sink in the older you get. You're like, 
holy shit, I was already out of high school and you're, you've already graduated high school. It's nuts. It really is nuts. Uh, they would never make the type uh, R all wheel drive. It would have to be accurate. Uh, I don't know, Cody. I just don't know. You, you can't count Honda out. They always said for years they would never bring a Civic Type R over. And as soon as they did, the hype is so high that even to this day, no dealer sells a Civic Type R at price. None. It is it is so hard for them. There's been a few that people post up on the forums. But you're lucky if you don't walk onto a dealer that has a Civic Type R sitting there and they're not asking ten or 15000 over sticker and they'll settle at five or 6000 over. It is so incredibly stupid. There's such a high demand for the Civic Type R's. So I, and Honda sees this. They've already said that they see it. So I don't know. Rumors have been going around about an Accord Type R and the Honda Fit Type R. So we'll see. Uh, I know a guy who thought uh, bought a brand new Dodge and doesn't have a touchscreen. Damn, that is like really old school. Like who doesn't have a touchscreen anymore? That's that's really old school. Like even my old Prelude. Um, I put a high-end Pioneer deck in it. I think it was like $700, the touchscreen that's in my uh, blue Prelude when I redid the stereo. And uh, it has a full touchscreen. Yes, it was $700 for the head unit, but it's amazing. And Bluetooth, satellite radio, you know, you can touch whatever. You can change whatever. It's full color screen. I can watch movies while I'm driving down the road in it. It's great. I love it. I used to – I sometimes would watch movies like every day and watch a little bit more and a little bit more. bet my wife's going to be like, come get my son. Come, Nope, he didn't. It was Dalton. Dalton's right me. I see you, Dalton. I see you there. Uh, oh, yeah. Consumer forces you traction. Oh, Tom. If, if anybody here subscribes to a YouTube channel called Auto Guide, they're a Canadian car review place. I'm not lying. They got a brand new 2018 Jeep. How about it left them stranded on the side of the road? A brand new 2018 Jeep, full electrical shutdown. It, all the electronics were just doing this, flashing on and off, flashing on and off. They had to come give, bring them another one and tow it off. And I'm like, what crap? I mean, a brand new vehicle. But again, American made garbage. I, I can't stand American cars because they're such they're so unreliable. And the resale value is terrible. How can I buy a brand new Dodge Charger? Let's say it's a scat pack, let's say, for fifty thousand dollars, and I turn around and I can't sell it for thirty five thousand back to them. It's just how do you lose value that quick? I I can't do it. I can't I can't I can't mm, nope, can't do it. Uh, good night, Dosky. Good night, man. Uh, love the Jeep. Yeah, and I was shocked, brand new, because I was like, "Oh, the new Jeeps are really nice," and Jeeps hold their value really, really good. And I was like, "Well, maybe I'll get a new Jeep, and you know, maybe down the road if I ever needed it, something like that." And I was like, "I could do a Jeep. That could be fine." But after seeing these electrical problems, I'm like, "Oh God, no!" Can you imagine, brand new? You've had it for a day or two, and the whole electronics go bad on it. Literally, you can see. Go watch the video of it. It just came out. A couple days ago, Auto Guide's YouTube channel, there are they're like, I don't know, 300,000 subscribers. They're Canadian people. And the thing was just like flashing. Every little screen was flashing. Even their flashers and brake lights on the back of the car didn't work. So they were so scared on the side of the road because they're like, nobody can see us. It was the evening. So nobody knew they were even there. It was terrible, terrible. Oh, so forest trash. Mom hates it. And Grandpa hates it. It was my dad. I have not bought, let's see. I am, I'm going through all my cars right now. Which cars have I owned? I, the only American cars I've owned were a Chevy Beretta and uh, a Mercury Cougar. But I bought the Cougar for like $2,000 from the neighbor just when I was in college. I drove it when I was in college for two years, and then I sold it. And I had my Chevy Beretta for two years before somebody T-boned me in it, and it was totaled. The Beretta gave me no issues. The, the Cougar had a lot of problems, a lot of problems, but it got me through half of college. So I was like $2,000. It wasn't bad. You know what I mean? Didn't get me into debt. I paid cash for it. This channel is growing, Cody, real fast, son. Real Like today alone, I, gear, I bet today alone I have picked up somewhere around I, – I have. I picked up over 50 subscribers just today alone. Uh, back – even six months ago, if I saw 15 to 20 subscribers a day, that's all I would ever see. Your high would be a 20. I'd be like, ooh, I got 20 subscribers today. Where now I'm getting 40s every day a lot of times, at least two or three days a week, I'm getting 40-something. Today I'm over 50. Some days I've hit 60. So I, the channel is definitely like doing this real quick. And I, I, I'm, I'm glad. It makes me happy to see the channel grow faster. 
And that's why I feel like I have to spend time with you guys every week just to give back a little bit and say thanks for watching the channel. And I really do appreciate it. Mazda 3, 184 horse, 8 seconds, 0 to 60. Um, I've never been the biggest fan of Mazda. I don't really like the looks of Mazda cars. I know it might be controversial, but I just never like the looks of them. Uh, if you did daily uploads of channel, I'm sure it would, Cody. I'm already getting a lot more, but um, I don't want to burn myself out at the same time, Cody. I don't want to be one of those YouTubers that is totally burnt out. Remember, I still have a regular job. I have to work Monday through Friday. I don't want it to be where it turns into a chore. Sometimes I can feel that it's definitely taking as much time as a part-time job would, like a couple hours a day, especially when I'm having to uh, record video footage and then I have to edit the video footage at night. Um, thank God I don't know how to do a ton of video editing. Like if I was one of these pro editors, it would probably take me twice as long, if not more. Because some of these editors I see that are just like, oh, make the videos are like as sexy as hell on some things. I don't know how to do a lot of that stuff. I just knew the really basic stuff. And it gets us by, obviously. And um, for now, that's what I need. But um, I, I couldn't imagine. So some, some, sometimes I'm already starting to feel that it's turning into a part-time job apart from my main job. So it's pretty crazy. Now, I would love to see Pontiac come back. I, that, I would love to see Pontiac make a strong comeback. Maybe come back with only three cars, like a, a new Pontiac G8. A new, obviously, you have to have the Firebird come back. Firebird and Trans Am, I would love that. And then maybe another four-door car or obviously bring an SUV. Obviously, SUVs is all what Americans want nowadays. So at least a, a small SUV and uh, maybe a new G8 for a four-door sedan and then a Firebird. I think if they just started with those three cars, I think they'd be okay. And then as the popularity grew up again and the sales grew, maybe they could expand to more SUVs or more cars, but you have to have the Firebird right away. And they're going to have to, they'd have to bring out an SUV right away because that's all Americans want. And then maybe bring a G8 back, a nice powerful G8. And I think for a Ford or, and maybe just leave it like that for a while. <sighs> Why did you choose... All I did is I needed a job. My friend was working. I was in high school. My friend got me a, got a job. He said, I'll get you a job. And that's basically how I got a job. Seriously, that's all I did. He said, come up here, drop my name when you go in for the interview. I did. And um, I just started working and I never stopped working. And uh, the pay kept going up every single year. I By the time I was at my job for six months, I had full health care. I was a 17-year-old kid with full health insurance. I had full coverage health insurance. I had a pension starting. I had, I mean, you, you just don't get that with anywhere else. I mean, I was a young kid having full pension already setting up. I had health care already. I mean, you know, and the pay was going higher and higher. And I was like, I was making twice as much as the kids in my class were. And I'm like, why should I leave this? I went to college reluctantly, but I did go. And uh, I just decided after a while, I'm like, I make so much money. Why leave now? Uh, more than you ever think. Uh, if you say they are, but you know, Jose, I don't get into some of the tips and tricks that like your Larry or Auto Geek or Junk Man or any of these pro detailers get into with the high end stuff. Those guys will teach you the best tips and tricks out there on YouTube. And then, like I said, then you use your McGuire's or Mother's or whatever you have, and then you do the same trick they're doing uh, without having to buy their high end products. But you can learn a lot from those guys if you really want to learn pro stuff. Now there's a lot of small channels that people are asking me do I subscribe to and they're just popping up and I say no I don't I don't honestly watch any of these channels I'm just giving you ideas that uh, you guys can watch all this stuff and you can learn what I what I like to see you you learn from this and then you take it into your apply it to your own car detailing and uh, at home with whatever products you have and you can really save a lot of money why should you pay somebody else to do their your car detailing when you could do it yourself and you could take pride in it. And that's what I like. You got to take pride in your hard work. It really does a lot. It's right about amount of give you free products. Okay, so here's how this works, Matthew. Anytime a company sends me products, they say, hey, uh, Chad, we're going to be sending you some products. We'd like you to test them, uh, review them for us, let us know what you think about the products. And if you want to make YouTube videos, you're more than welcome to, but you are not uh, required to. That's all they say. So they send me the products for free. But that's all they tell me. So they they don't pay me for it. They don't tell me I have to have them done. They tell me just get let me know if we need to work on anything or if you love the product, let us know. We'd like to hear that too. But if we need to work on the product, please let me know what we need to work on and go from there. 
Um, I've been in contact recently with Turtle Wax again, and I told him what basically what's hot right now. And I said, this is what they need to get into. I, I was telling him for about two years, I was like, why do you guys not have a wireless wash? Wireless wash is the new hot item. You've got to get into it. Well, obviously this year they finally listened. He said, we listened, we finally did it. I'm like, good. I said, now you're going to need, uh, you know, different stuff like wheels. You need a high end, like a high shine wheel stuff. And then just a low clean shine to it. That's all everybody wants. You don't need anything more than that. Same with dash. You either want a shiny dash or you want like a, just a regular flat clean dash. You don't need to have a million products. That's about it, you know, and people, that's all they really want to buy. So I, that's basically what happens. And I just give them feedback, but uh, nobody has ever paid me. I've never gotten a paycheck saying, Chad, thanks so much for making our videos. Here's a $500 check. I've never received a check from these people. I have received Christmas gifts from uh, some of the companies. They've sent me like Food stuff. Um, I got a gift card from one of them for for something. Amazon. Uh, I've gotten just like uh, just thank you cards. I've gotten uh, gift bags and stuff. I mean, you get that kind of stuff, but that's all I really have ever gotten. But nobody has come out and said thanks so much. Here, give me your PayPal account, and I'm going to give you money. I've never had that before ever. So it's just the way it goes down. If I talk bad about a company, they do not mind. And I tell them straight up and I ask them when they contact me, I say, what if I don't like the product? And I say, Are, is it going to be a problem? They say no, because that helps us make the products better. And that's the way it works. As a matter of fact, Stoner Car Care had a car wash out. Some It's called coating car wash. Uh, when I first tried it, it acted like it was really watered down. It's it's a waterless. It's a it's not a waterless. It's a wash and wax. The problem was it has so much of the wax coating in it that it killed the suds where there was no suds in it. And uh, a lot of water, a lot of these washes and waxes have that problem. And I told him, I was like, something's got to give, man. It's, it's terrible. And um, he literally last week sent me a brand new lab bottle. So it's not obviously not on the shelves, but it's a lab test bottle. And he wants me to test it and then contact him and let me know what I think about it. Uh, thoughts on glitter wheels. If you're a gay man, Okay but I'm not a gay man. So uh, I wouldn't have a glitter stuff. Um, whatever floats your boat. You know what I mean? If, if half the guys in here are gay and they like glitter wheels, more power to them. That's the way I see it. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not, not my type of thing, but you know, whatever. Is there an air freshener that is closest to a new car smell in your experience? Not really. You know, after buying, uh, the minivan and we bought my wife's Hyundai Tucson before that. And we bought, what else do we buy new? Uh, just those two recently since we've been married. Uh, nothing I smell smells like a new car. Nothing at all. I, I don't understand that when they say new car smell, it doesn't smell like that at all. Um, uh, Matthew, you're spamming. It's automatically flagging you. Just let you know, Matthew. Uh, YouTube's flagging every one of your comments, buddy. Uh, they're not legally allowed to give you a check plan. Uh, I have never given, gotten anything from these companies, no payments whatsoever. Like I said, I've gotten like candy baskets and stuff. Dalton, if you're writing me or so, who the hell I've got like a million people writing me right now. I had to put it on silent. So I apologize. Um, yeah, I've only, I've never got anything. Like I said, I've got gift baskets with like chocolate turtles and stuff for Christmas. I've gotten stuff from my, my, when my son was born, Turtle Wax sent me a bunch of uh, turtle stuff, turtle related, like uh, bath bath floaties. They sent some uh, onesies and stuff like that for my son that had turtles on it, stuff like that. But I mean, I've never, nobody's ever paid me for what I do, saying like, you put these videos out, we'll give you this much money. And it's never, ever happened. Uh, you know, the, just the nice little gifts like that have been nice, you know, for my son and stuff. And then obviously we had, we got chocolate turtles. Turtle Wax sent us chocolate turtles, you know, the chocolate color turtles. That was really cool. Uh, they all, they did all turtle stuff. That was pretty fun. They've said, they've gave me a lot of companies, give me shirts and stuff like that. And obviously the banners, I love the banners. That's one of my things. I say, I want a banner and that's what they do. Flex versus Rubens. I've tried the flex when I was at detail fest. I loved it. I didn't have time to try the Rubens, Um, but I heard really good things about them. I wanted to try uh, the Griot's Garage. They're bigger ones, um, but I didn't have a chance to try those either. But I, I really, really like the Flex a lot. It's a German company. If you guys don't know, it's a polishers. They make polishers. Uh, they're a German company, and Rupes is Italian. 
So uh, they both make high-end polishers for your cars, but uh, for a lot of pro detailing level, we're talking these things are three and four hundred and something dollars going up from there in price. But they'll they'll really cut through the swirls and stuff really fast. They're not just a basic uh, like Rio's Garage six inch one. These are powerful professional tools. But I really like the Flex one. When I got to use it, I was like, this is nice. This is really nice in the hand. Uh, um, what is it? I was about to pick up some invisible glass cleaner, but if I did, it would have put me $25 per month car care. Ah, you won't have any problem with it. Stoner and car care's invisible glass is a top notch glass cleaner. I use it on my motorcycle helmets all the time. As a matter of fact, I took it with me to the Grom ride today and I put it in my, I took a bag full of stuff and that's where I put it and I cleaned my helmet with it. I uh, cleaned my glasses with it. I have sunglasses with it. I've cleaned uh, everything. Uh, you're talking my windows, inside of my windows. That stuff is a very, I use it in the house. Stoner Car Care is invisible glass. It is a top notch glass cleaning product. Zero streaks whatsoever. Cinebox and Turtle Wax products for sale at Sands Club. Um, cool. Now, one thing I asked them, I said, have you guys thought about um, a Christmas bucket? You're going to see on, on Tuesday's video, Stoner Car Care from, is going to start selling an all in one bucket. It's a five gallon bucket. You're going to see the unboxing. It's a so it's a five gallon bucket. It's a stoner car care in the front. It comes with a grit guard, four microfiber towels, and nine different products in it. And they're going to be selling it for like a hundred dollars, okay? With all of this in there, and uh, it comes that that video will be out Tuesday. They're going to start selling and sending it, and it's going to be like a, a you get literally everything you need to clean your car in a, this five gallon bucket. And they'll send it right from the warehouse, and that video will be out on things. So I asked. Turtle wax. I'm like, look, a lot of people want a turtle wax bucket. They see my bucket and they want it. How about you go in with this and um, uh, what's it called? I'm going to put you in timeout because apparently you don't listen, Matthew. And um, he's Matthew is spamming the chat really bad, guys. Sorry. And um, what I said is, why don't you put a, a bucket in there and sell it as a Christmas thing? You know, at Christmas, they sell sometimes they'll sell buckets, little stuff. I was like, put some of your products in a five-gallon bucket with a turtle wax symbol on it, and then you know, sell that for like thirty bucks or whatever, or thirty-five dollars at Walmart and stuff. He said that's a really good idea. I'll have to bring it up to uh, his upper management team because he said they kind of have to like really get on things. We're talking like eight, nine, ten months early before it even hits the shelves. They have to already start being in negotiations with Walmart and other companies. It's nuts how things are. It's really crazy. I had to learn all. I learned all about that when I was turtle wax headquarters. Hi from San Antonio. Hello from Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, does Red GTR attract the wrong attention? Never, Cody. Never. Most people have no idea what a GTR is. Unless you're a car person, you have no idea what a GTR is. I'll give you an example. Last Saturday, we were at Disney Springs, what used to be called Downtown Disney. We were in one of their far parking lots. It's Disney's outdoor shopping mall kind of area, whatever, and... Um, I was out there talking we, we met my wife's doctor friends and we took the GTR out there and I was in an open parking spots and we were just sitting there talking to them, right? To get ready to say goodbye. Well, it was a whole group of like, you know, 10 girls and a couple boys and their family from Ohio. I guess it was a big group thing going there. Well, I guess the kids, the younger guys were teenage kids and they were going nuts when they saw a GTR and the, the parents were like, what is this thing? I've never heard of it, you know? And so you get a lot of that, that people have no clue what it is. Even the young girls were like, I don't know what it is. And they were just like shocked that I even had three cars and everything like, Oh my God, you're rich. And I'm like, no, I'll just buying cars over time. And, uh, that's just the way it is. But there was like those couple of kids knew what it was, the boys, but the girls, and then you have these moms. I'm not lying guys. We're talking like soccer moms started posing next to the GTR. It was the funniest thing you've ever seen. First off, they had no idea what kind of car it was. And then they wanted to pose next to the GTR. They were like doing this next to it and stuff. It was the funniest thing ever. So I had all these like, you know, 35, 45 year old moms posing next to my GTR. It was pretty good. It was a very interesting time. Good times. Good times. Best tire brush. Um, I use the Daytona Speedmaster brush. It's sold by AutoGeek. So you guys got to see it and it bends and everything and twists. It has a little soft little rubber top to it. It can't, it will not scratch your wheels. It's very, very soft bristles. I love that thing. It gets in between the tightest things. It's called a Speedmaster brush. It's like $25, but it is worth every single penny. Now, many companies are starting to sell products like it, but it's just the AutoGeek's the one that I've had the longest. 
Hey, from Miami. What's up, buddy? Say say what city you're really from. Don't say Miami. You know you're not from Miami. You're probably from like Hialeah, um, you know, wherever, Kendall, you know, Opelaka, Wynwood. You're not from Miami. Go ahead and say where you're really from, Johanna. Uh, do you like the beach or the river better? Um, I don't really – I grew up in Florida my whole life, so the beach really doesn't do much for me. I'll tell you that. Like I used to go to the beach a lot as a kid, but it doesn't do that much for me anymore. I'd, I'd just rather go to like the water parks here at Disney or Universal or Aquatica with SeaWorld, and that just that's enough for me. You know what I mean? I think people uh, might look at the GTR and think it's a 350. No, I never had that. Most people just uh, they don't know what it is. They honestly have no idea what it is. Accord. Are there times when you want a uh, a balling car and when you want no? I don't really think about it like that. It just is, uh, do I want to take the GTR and have a fast, fun car that turns heads once in a while, or I just want to like go back and forth? Most of the time, I'll take my Hondas to work, or if I take my motorcycles, just because where it's at work, it might get scratched up, you know, just things fall on it, you know, parking by trees, that sort of thing. So that's why I just usually take the Hondas all the time to work. That's what I do. I don't really care for watches. I mean, I've got a couple watches. I got two watches right here. I got like, this one right here, my citizen watch. I got a regular citizen watch there, but I don't really, it's no big deal for me. Uh, the weather matter with you, you, uh, only if I'm washing my car. Like if I know it's going to rain and I just got done cleaning the car, I will not take that car out. It's just going to sit in the garage and I take one of the other cars out to work. You know what I mean? Uh, I got Matthew so annoying. I, I, I put him in a timeout. He kept asking, would you follow him on Instagram? I don't follow you on Instagram. No, I'm not going to follow you on Instagram. I don't care about your Instagram. Sorry, buddy. Um, Coral Gables. See? See? I knew you were from Miami. I knew you were from Miami. Uh, I was like, yep. I was like, I knew it. It's like, here, I'll give you an example for y'all who don't know. And you guys, when the bigger cities can vouch on this. Let's say you're from New York. Everybody, you, every, a lot of people say, I'm from New York City. I guarantee you're not from New York City. You live in a borough or you live 20 minutes, 30 minutes north of New York City. But because people don't know where those towns are, you just clean, you just rep New York. Well, the same thing happens here in Orlando big time. Everybody says Orlando. Well, I don't live in Orlando. I live in, I live in Kissimmee, Florida, which is a suburb right below. It's one of the suburbs. It's in a different county. It's not even in the same county as Orlando. But everybody here claims Orlando. Well, the same thing about all the small towns all around Orlando. They just say I'm from Orlando. So that's why I called out Johanna. I was like, you ain't from Miami. I know you're not from there. So I just picking on you a little bit. Uh, what other are your passions? Um, a lot of travel. I like to travel as much as I can. I We cruise a lot. Uh, our cruise next month to Bermuda will be my 24th cruise on a cruise ship. I've been on 24 cruises. I could start a YouTube channel just on cruises. I'm not lying. I have so much experience on cruise ships. I've been around all of North America on a cruise ship. Um, I we were supposed to. Go, I've been all over Europe, but not on a cruise ship. So we're we're talking about doing that next year or two. We're just waiting for Nathan to be a little older. But I've been on most almost every major cruise line there is. I've been on it, so I could have a whole YouTube channel just on it. But there's so many YouTube channels on cruising that it just it, you know it's it's like making a video game channel. It's pointless. You really it's you're just gonna get lost in the mess. You know what I mean? Uh, have I ever had somebody? Oh yeah, for sure. Jared, I'll give you an example. Uh, the other night I was coming home probably about a week or two ago. I have it on, I have it on my go, my, uh, not my GoPro, my dash cam from my car. It was a, it was just a junked out old civic from like 2006. He was missing a hubcap and everything. Well, he pulled up beside me and just starts revving his car. And I'm like, really? And at the light he took off. Arr! I'm like, what the, and he wasn't going anywhere. He was just, it was barely moving. And I was just laughing my ass off. And I'm like, put my hands up like, why do you just want to see the GTR go fast? Because you know, you're never going to catch up to a GTR. So it's pretty funny, but yeah, for sure. I've had it. I ever thought about meet up with super speeders, Rob. No, I don't honestly go and think that I want to have meetups with big YouTubers. I guess, is that weird to say? I don't like people. I guess there's a big couple of big YouTubers in the Orlando area. And I, I don't think about that. I don't think like, Oh my God, I want to go to a meetup. I just, I guess it doesn't do anything for me. Maybe I'm getting old. And I just don't care. But if I ran into somebody that's big, hey, that's cool. Like, um, I'll give you an example. 
there's uh, two big motorcycle uh, moto vlogger YouTube channels that we're talking have like three or four hundred thousand subscribers. One dude has like a hundred and something thousand subscribers. Well, they were at the meet today, and uh, the one definitely knows me. Uh, he he came up and said, "Dude, nice minivan." <laughs> when I pulled in, he has a pretty big YouTube channel, but I don't go out of my way to like the younger guys do and go talk to them and kiss their ass. It doesn't mean anything to me. You know, it's like, yeah, you have an amazing huge YouTube channel. Um, I can kind of figure out that you're probably making like a couple thousand dollars a month just off YouTube revenue ads, but I, I don't go up there and like, you know, kiss their ass. It's just like, if I see him and they see me, I'm like, Hey, and it's, it's just generally about it. You know, that's just the way it works. And, uh, that's the way I see it. But yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about a meetups. Time for Kimmel guys, microfibers, one of the brands I have them from Grios. I have them from, uh, 303. I have them from, um, Wax Gods, and I have them from uh, uh, Mastersons. Mastersons is really good. Wax Mastersons and Wax Gods are about the same. They're, I, I, they're kind of identical. And Chemical Guys is kind of the same as well. They're all about the probably they're made by the same company. I'm just going to go out here and guess. And then they buy them, and then they just resell them themselves. You know what I mean? I think a lot of companies do that. They buy in bulk. They might buy like a thousand or two thousand at a time, and then when you order it, then they just pull it out of a big box and they just you know go from there. But I'm guessing they probably all came from, come from the same microfiber manufacturer because they look they look the same. So it's like mm -hmm. I I figured you know. Um, have you had a chance to use thermite? No, buddy. Uh, Rodney, last weekend we um, it was weird because I was going to do it, and then out of the blue, I was we were invited by those doctor friends of my wife to go down downtown Disney, and then Sunday we dropped my prelude off in uh, a small city outside of uh, Tampa to do the transmission swap. So I never had any times, man. You're Matthew. All right, Matthew, don't spam me, Matthew. We don't like spammers here, Matthew. Um, I have, I've had a lot of people spam in channels before, and I just kind of, you know, the funny thing is YouTube actually catches it all, so just let you know. That is congratulations, Justin. Everybody say good job, Justin. Justin, congratulations. I was going to expect that you were going to be with a guy, but, hey, if you were with a girl, that's good to hear it, too. It's good to hear it, too. Um, have you ever tried 3M products? I've tried their car wash before, and it was decent. No complaints with it at all. Um, ever get sick on a cruise? No. Uh, the worst I would say I've ever had was we were on uh, the Celebrity Solstice. It was like my third cruise ever. We were uh, we had just left Cozumel, and we didn't know it. A hurricane had blown up in the Gulf of Mexico and went in by Honduras and Belize, just south of where we were in Mexico. And because of that, it was really, really rocky seas. It was nuts. It blew up from literally overnight. It went from heavy thunderstorms to a Cat Gore 1 or 2 hurricane. And then from there, and um, it, we had like 20, 22 foot seas or something like that. So the boat was doing this the entire time. And then it would rock side to side. You could hear everything creaking and it would go back and like your shades would do back and this. Um, you're, you're walking down the hallway and you're just doing this the entire time. And they have railings on the hallways going by the rooms. And then, you know, there we went to dinner and over, I'd say over half of the, the dining room wasn't even there. Like people just weren't willing to eat. You're, you're so your forks and knives were doing this on the table going back and forth. Um, the, the pool was sloshing back and forth so hard that it literally would slosh and hit and would go up to the deck above, you know, the sun deck that would runs around the pool. They would actually was going up as high as the second deck and then coming back down. I have video of it. It's pretty crazy. But that was the worst uh, I'd ever had. I was a little bit motion sickness, but my I wasn't that bad. My wife was throwing. She started to throw up a little bit, though. But it was pretty bad for a lot of people. I went out on the deck by the water because they started shutting down all the doors. Like any doors to the outside, they shut everything down in a heavy seas because they don't want you going out there and getting hurt. So you can't go out by the pool and lock everything down and nobody's allowed to go outside of like just the main areas. But um, I was able to go out in this area and I was just sitting there watching the uh, waves on the deck seven. There's like, it's called a promenade deck that goes around, it's around deck seven up. And they have a lot of lawn chair kind of things out there. And I was leaning on the side, just watching it. Every time they would hit the water like this, this the sea spray would hit me seven stories up because the, oh, the waves were so high. It was nuts. And when the waves would, you would hit back through the waves and go, it goes bang, and then it, uh, and every time. So you you go up, you come back down, hit the wave like that. You'd hear it go bang, and then it goes, uh, and then you'd hear everything just rattle on the ship every single time you go up, and then you come back down again. And at the same time, the boat's doing this. That was the worst I'd ever, ever seen. Other than that, you, you might have some, like, 10-foot seas and some, like, rainstorms, but nothing bad. 
Uh, I've ever checked out Amos Waterless Foam Cannon. I have not, buddy. Uh, I know I love. I know you love foam. I haven't seen it. Sorry, man. Please help me get off AA Outglass uh, over. Uh, can't get it off, dude. That stuff sucks, Levi. Jesus, that stuff sucks. I literally took that stuff back. The armor has an Outlast glaze. This is one of my videos that has a, so much hatred on it. Okay, so I went around it just like a regular tire shine. I went shh, right. That's it. And I just covered it in areas that I missed. Just a typical, you know, person. Well, what happened is when it dried, it started drying to a whitish blue color to it. It was terrible looking. And I have videos on YouTube. Do you know how much hate I have on that video? And I'm just trying to give everybody a thing. I have so much hate where you people saying you're doing it wrong. And then I have the other side saying I had the same thing happen in my, it was, it was such a bad product. I used it one time, reboxed it back up, took it off to Walmart and I got it. got my refund for it. It was such a bad product. It was awful. No, I don't shop at Costco. We don't have a Costco card. We only have a Sam's card. Uh, wait, where are the bananas on the uh, floor? Oh yeah, that's from my son's toy. They're uh, a toy bananas. Uh, my son has all his stuff. My my mom and his his grandma from her side of the family gives him a bunch of stuff. It's for one of those little cash registers for kids to learn numbers and all that stuff. It's pretty crazy. Tips on going on a cruise. Pros and cons. Going on in the summer. Don't overpack what you don't need. Um, what else do I say? Um, basic stuff. Just make sure you have all your basic stuff with you. Um, yeah, I see a lot of people overpack and you don't need all that stuff. Um, a lot of people don't dress up for dinner. Uh, some of the cruise ships demand that you to dress up, but a lot of people still don't do it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And then if they don't want to, then they just go up to the, like the, the Lido deck where it's like a buffet and they just go up there to the buffet where you don't have to wear anything. You wear like your swim shorts and stuff like that. That's all they do. So it's really doesn't matter. Um, if you haven't ever been on a cruise, do it like a three or four day one to the Bahamas. They they'll stop at Nassau Bahamas and then go to their private cruise island. Just do one of those. Get a get a feel for cruising, and then from there decide if you want to do a seven day cruise or you're like, ah, it doesn't work out for me. Uh, can you give details about going on a cruise? Uh, at feel free to ask whatever you want. I know it's not car related, but you guys can. It doesn't, guys, you don't ever have to ask me anything. It's just 100% car related. You can ask me, like he's asking me about cruises. Like I said, this will be my 24th cruise. Most people we run into, we've cruised more than anybody that we've run into. There's a few of those old elderly couples that have done like 30 and 40 cruises. But for the most part, on every cruise we go on, we have been on more cruises than anybody else we've been on. So we have a pretty good idea of what cruises are. It's like for me trying out all these products. I've tried out everything basically. So I can give you a generally good idea of what's good and what's bad. And I can go from there. So if you guys ever have any questions about other stuff, feel free to ask. Uh, Do you ever try the rag company, Rex? No, I haven't yet. No, I haven't. They had a good deal on Amazon as well. But uh, when I saw six for $12 for chemical guys, I was like, ooh, let's do that. What's up, Daniel? Uh, you shouldn't do it in a Accord 79 meetup. I should do one. Oh, I thought you said you shouldn't. Maybe one day, but you know, here's the pressure as a YouTuber. If you, oh, if you don't literally, uh, to me personally, if my car wouldn't be 100% swirl free and absolutely mint condition paint wise, I feel like people would dog me out. Like, I, I don't know. I could call me just, uh, you know, hysteria, whatever you want to call it. But I would feel like if my car wasn't have every little minor hair of a swirl out, that people would make fun of me. And I, I don't want to deal with that either. So I don't know, maybe, maybe later on, but uh, maybe it's like a hundred thousand subscriber thing, but I don't think this channel will ever hit 100,000. I'll be happy if it would hit 50,000 one day, but I'm not going out there being like, it's going to hit a hundred thousand. I'm, I'm happy with the growth right now. Let's put it that way. I'm very happy with it. What do you think about ceramic coating? Uh, there is amazing. I've seen, I have used my friend's GTR. I have ceramic coating, but I just haven't had a chance to apply it to my GTR. It's amazing. And that low stance boy look. Oh, uh, you mean like what most Puerto Ricans do? The the stance nation, like most Puerto Rican kids tend to do. If there's any Puerto Ricans in here, I apologize ahead of time. But for the most part, I live in Kissimmee, Florida, which is 70% Hispanic. And uh, mostly mostly all Puerto Ricans of descent, whether they're from New York, New Jersey, or from the islands of Puerto Rico. And they're, they're how, these Hondas are Corollas and their wheels are like this. It's, it's everywhere. So that's why I say, you mean the Puerto Rican guys? But it, they look stupid. They look really stupid. But hey. It's not my car, but I sure as hell would never drive with that. Have I tried Kemmel Guy's Paste Wax? No, I have not. 
Uh, <laughs> you guys going back and forth. Drama, drama, drama. This is fun. Can you get robbed on a cruise? I've heard a lot of people in stories that have been robbed on the island. But when you go on an island, you only need to probably bring about $60 cash with you. Every island in the Caribbean takes U.S. dollars. You don't need to get anything exchanged. You just take American dollars out, and that's it. So you leave the rest in like every room in the closet has it your little um, has a little safe in it. Keep all your money in the safe. Keep your credit cards in the safe. Whatever you do, leave everything in that safe and only bring like sixty dollars cash with you on every island. If you need to go back to the ship, you can always go back. But in case something were ever happened, you were that one in a million person that got robbed on an island. It does happen. There are stories about it. Then you're only out sixty bucks. You're not out hundreds of dollars. You're not out all your credit cards and all that stuff. You know what I mean? So only ever carry, you know, we usually carry only $60 every time we go on an island, maybe 40 to 60, because we've been to every island now in the Caribbean where it's no big deal. Uh, I'm curious if you've been on a cruise. Um, Puerto Ricans, uh, Canberra is called a Mexi flush. Well, no, there's no, <laughs> there's no Mexicans here. Uh, Mexicans are like almost non-existent in Kissimmee. It's almost all Puerto Ricans. There are. Dominicans here and uh, a few Cubans, but it's almost all Puerto Ricans here. Uh, Mexicans. Yeah, we're not talking about Mexicans. We're okay. What's up, Ryan? How you doing, buddy? Uh, and that's funny. Fortis, your message, Fortis, about the lowriders and the Hispanics got flagged. That is so funny. It's probably because of the homos, of the homo comma. That's probably what flagged you on it, buddy. Do you have a favorite brand of polishing pads? I have a bunch from Chemical Guys, a bunch from Lake County. Lake is it Lake? It's Lake County pads, and I have a bunch from Griot's Garage. All of them work just fine. All of them work fine, no problems whatever. Do the maids clean up your room so you say you don't want them to touch your stuff? Now, I've never had anybody touch my stuff. They might move it over a little bit to clean up the counters, but they never touch our stuff. Um, they might just kind of put it in a pile over here, but uh, they clean once a day on the cruise ship. Some cruises are twice a day, but you can put up your little thing that says do not disturb and they won't bother you again. Can you apply regular car care products two or three months after? Uh, Julian, a lot of the car, co pro car care products, especially like um, CarPro, the, that I have the C quartz for, I haven't tried it yet. What they recommend is to give a bit of a boost to it. It actually, to get there, um, it's a spray-on sealant. I forgot the name of it. it. It came with the package I bought. And it's a spray-on sealant to help uh, boost the actual protection of it over time. So that's really cool. But, yeah, you can definitely put spray-on sealant for sure on top of it. Uh, cruise versus resort, pros and cons. Okay, a cruise, you go to sleep, you wake up, and you're on a whole new country or a whole new island. Resort, you're still in the same place. You never, ever change. Uh-oh, I got a text. I bet it's my wife. Come, I need to get thing. I'm just going to tell him, put him in there. Oh, my wife wrote. Need to bit him. All right, guys, I need two more minutes. I got to go get my son. My wife wrote me twice. I have to go get my son. Give me two minutes. I got to get my son. I'll put him downstairs, and I'll be back. I do apologize. No. The
Sorry about that, guys. I'm coming. That's what she said. <sighs> <sighs> Sorry, guys. Sure enough, I had to take my son away. See, here's the box that just came in from Amazon, even though it's chemical guys. So, apologize, guys. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Uh, sorry. One million years later. Why does he have to do all the chores? Um, because it's the agreement we had that uh, whenever uh, we got married, that I would be actually be the one that has to do, uh, take care of the house. So um, she could work during the days and I worked during the evenings. So what happens is I pay the bills online. I mow the yard. I clean the clothes. I clean the dishes. I uh, kind of pick up around the house because my wife's a really, she's a pig and um, I watch my son basically all day long. That's the way it works. Uh, fat chicks need love too, but they got to pay. Now, Ford is, don't be mean like that. If she makes a lot of money, she's paying for you to be happy, sir. Uh, each town. Uh, no, Carlos, no. I was taking care of my son. My, my, he was in there with my wife, and my wife was going to bed, so she wants me to. So she texts me. That's how she gets hold of me. She texts me to come get him. Um, that's what she said. Fast and loud. No, it doesn't. Unbox ASAP. No, you just said rude things about me. Say nice things about me first, Carlos, and then I'll unbox it for you. That's not fair. She pulls away. weight. Um, yeah, I don't know, Joanna. That's just the way it goes. And, um, you know, it's just if, if I don't do it, nobody will do it. And that's the problem. Uh, yeah, she texts me on the house all the time. That's the way it goes. Uh, yeah, if, if I don't do it, it literally will not get done. And that's the problem. Um so at least I handle all the finances, you know, and uh, so I pay all the bills extra. I just I do everything myself. Like the cruises, I book the cruises. I book the flights. Like we're going to, we're flying into New York for this next cruise. We're going to Bermuda. Um, what else? Uh, everything I do basically. And then she just she's basically just the passenger along the road. That's all how it works. She, around the house, yes, Dalton, but at work, no. She works hard and she makes very good money, as you know. But around the house, yes, yes, very much so, Dalton. Uh, Jonas, like, is going to have a heart attack over there? I don't think, Jonas, is this the first time you've ever been on a live stream with us? Uh, we always do these kind of live streams. It's, it's kind of been awkward tonight because my son has been back and forth, and i got to kind of watch my son. He's watching Blaze and the Monster Machines downstairs on the big TV and uh, having fun. But, uh, yeah, that's why. Any good Dash products? There's a ton of good Dash products out there, Julian. You know one of the ones I like the best? It works really good. Is the actual um, uh, the turtle wax dash of glass? Not only because it's good for the dash and it doesn't give you any shine, it cleans the dash, but it also is good for the glass. So it's like a two in one. That's why I really like that one. It's like five dollars. It's really good. What's up, Kia? How you doing, man? Uh, marriage goals. Um, sometimes, Brian. You. One thing I learned a long time ago, after seeing many guys before me get married, is there's some things that you can be jealous about. But then there's things I don't want anything to do with their marriage. And the same thing happens with my marriage. That's just the way it goes. Some, things, some guys are going to be like, damn, you have it made. And then others are going to be like, and then if you knew like, if you knew the whole story, you might be like, oh, I don't want this part of it. But this is really nice over here. And that's just generally the way I've seen it. And I guess that's the way it goes. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know what you guys are talking about with Matt. What season do you put on your steaks? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, I, when I go to steaks, I just get stuff from uh, whatchamacallit. Either she's really exhausted from work or she's really, uh, we just don't get into that. We don't get into that right now. She makes a lot of money, a lot of money. So she just kind of feels like, you know, you do it because I'm making the huge amount of money. That's just the way it goes. Open a P.O. box so we can see, send you stuff. I already have a P.O. box, Carlos. Every single description on every video I put out in the description below underneath like the Facebook links and all that has my P.O. box. You can send it all the time. Pooh Panda with $10. What's going on, buddy? Do you wash your mic fiber in a regular detergent? I have okay. Matter of fact, Pooh, just for you, because you just happened to ask this random question at the same time I got a bunch of microfiber stuff in. That's what it's in here, guys. Let me move this stuff out of the way. Get out of the way. Let's uh show it to you. Hold on. Bear with me, guys, while we're opening Amazon boxes. I see these every single day. We're talking 
six trailers of this kind of stuff a day. Six trailers comes through every day. So, here we go. I'm prepared for everything up here. I'm like a Boy Scout. But what you are talking about, who? Here you go. So, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is from Camel Guys, a microfiber wash, okay? For the longest time, I will be straight and honest with you, Pooh. I used to only ever use um, just regular detergent. Now, I followed the rules where you use hot water when you're actually washing the microfibers. You use it on hot water, but you only use it on like an air fluff dryer or low heat temperature when you're actually drying them. That's how you dry it. So dry it on a low heat temperature or fluff only, and then when you're for the wash cycle, it needs to be on hot. But um, for the longest time, I used to only use that. But I did notice when uh, Master Greg Masterson sent me his new waterless wash. I'm not sorry. God, not waterless wash. His microfiber that I actually did use it, and I, I did notice a big difference. They were definitely more clean to the feel than uh, regular stuff. Maybe, I guess, from what I understand, this stuff actually breaks down um, uh, the, the, you know, the sealants, the waxes and stuff that regular stuff would just, you know, water just runs off those waxes, and this breaks it down more. So... I did buy this to give it a shot out, and uh, we'll see what happens. But so that's what it is, Pooh. And uh, I appreciate the ten dollars as always, Pooh. That's I think it's the second time you donated in like two weeks. So thanks so much. So again, anytime people donate to my channel, all that's doing is then going back into the pocket because of the fact that I buy all these things. As a matter of fact, this hole right here that I bought. So I'll show you guys what I bought. So I bought all this. So. It's six of these and six of these. They were $12 and change each. It was a steal of a deal. Normally, there's over $20 for this. So I got six of these and six of these plus that, and it was like $30. Either way, what I'm getting to the point is when I buy a lot of these products to try out, that comes from straight out of my pocket. So anytime people donate, it literally helps offset the high expenses that I pay for it when I make these videos for you. So I really do appreciate it when uh, people like Pooh takes the time to donate their hard-earned money when they don't have to. It really helps me financially offset those stupid, expensive things. But I love doing it, and it has been a lot of fun doing this channel. But I want you guys to know that you don't ever have to donate if you don't want to. I would never beg for it because I make my own money. It just definitely, when it does, it definitely does help pay the bills. Johanna, I love your streams. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Again, I don't think I've met you before. I've or at least we've talked before on here. Um, I will remember you in the future, I promise. Um, being a, a lady, you don't hear many ladies in the detailing side of it. So I appreciate you swinging by. It really does mean a lot. And of course, you're from Florida. So what's up? What's up? Uh, does she do anything not trying to be rude? Um, around the house? No, not at all, Dalton. Not nothing. Um, at work? Yeah, she works, of course. Uh, Joanna, that's part of the thing we always do. We always hang out. As a matter of fact, Joanna, I was down there at uh, at Detail Fest, Auto Geeks Detail Fest back in was it March? Yeah, it was March. I went to Detail Fest. Stoner Car Care uh, invited me for the second year in a row and gave me uh, VIP tickets, and um, I was down there. And so I was down your way. And then, of course, we the next day we left from there and went to uh, Port of Miami. We went on the Norwegian getaway. Yeah, the getaway for the Western Caribbean cruise. So we was just down in Miami two months ago. And here we are next month. We're going on another cruise on Norwegian escape to Bermuda. So got to fly up to New York this time. We can't just drive because I'm not driving that long drive to New York city. No, no. Hello from Eliana, Ivy and Daniel. What's up y'all. It's been a, been a week, hasn't it? Dude, a woman should be submissive. Oh yeah. You tell her that right now, Cody, she will play the smackdown on you. Don't ever say that kind of stuff to her. She's definitely in the 21st century woman. How's that sound? Love your video chat. Hope for the best channel. I, I'm telling you, Daniel, we are blowing. This channel is blowing up. Um, I haven't re responded to any of my comments from yesterday because I was out of town. Uh, I don't even know how many uh, things I've got right now. Hold on. Let me check. I'll look my subscriber count real fast here. Uh, 21,667. So that's uh, pretty good stuff right there. Uh, we're getting along. I think I've, I gained 50-something subscribers in just today alone. So it was good, good stuff. Got the Walmart foam gun a year ago. Still use it. I can't complain. You know, that's the thing. I mean, it works out really good. You know, um, it's $20. It's, is it the high end, higher end, like metal quality that the, the chemical guys is? No, definitely not. Uh, where, you know, it's brass inside with a coating on the outside. You know, this is definitely plastic, as you know. But it's still, the results you get are identical. Identical. So I'm going to do a head-to-head -head competition and just show people that. 
Uh, but unlike where the Amazon phone can was basically the same, this is definitely a cheaper quality through here for sure than it. Uh, yes, Joanna, she is a doctor. Um, so what, what, what I told her is I said, the only reason I'd leave you is for a woman who makes more than you. Okay. <laughs> so I said, if she makes more than you, then yes, I'll, I, you know, I can always leave you. Cause she's always like, you're going to leave me. I'm like, why? I was like, unless she makes like more than you. I was like, why would that's just stupidity. I'm like, why would you do that in the first place anyways? Yeah, we're leaving for Disney tomorrow. I was just at, um, whatchamacallit, uh, what's it called? Brain fart here. Yeah, I was just there um, today. And the way home from Jacksonville, I, Disney World has a pass holder magnets, right, that are um, special. They're, they're doing during the Flower and Garden Festival. And uh, it has Minnie Mouse on it. The first time they've ever put Minnie Mouse on a magnet, the, Minnie, the pass holder magnets. And it's purple with like little flowers around it. Well, we stopped there because we're pass holders, so we get free magnets. So we stopped and picked up uh, our two uh, pass holder magnets tonight at Epcot. And then now they just announced that um, starting next month, they're going to have a Donald Duck pass holder one, and it's going to be at Hollywood Studios. So we got to go to Hollywood Studios and pick it up next month. So that's what's going on. Um, did I miss something? Dunzor, when did you donate? Or am I just so far behind? Oh, I just see it. Jeez Louise, guys. I apologize, guys. I'm like, I, at the top, it showed that you donated. And I'm like, I didn't see a donation. Did I screw up? Because I feel so bad if I would never uh, properly thank anybody. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, that's just rude. You know, it's like getting a gift and not saying thank you for it. You know, and at Christmas, it's like, that's a dick move. So I, I'm sorry. I just, it is, it had not scrolled up on me yet. So I do apologize. I was like, oh my God, how am I rude? What's up, buddy? How you doing? And Dunsworth, thank you so much. Again, dude, that's another $10. Again, uh, like I said, when you, like I said, I spent like this stuff, this is, let me show you these since we're at the thing, since we're having fun guys, let's, uh, let's show you exactly how plush these really are. Let's go check them out for ourselves. So what these are, these are the chemical guys, large detailing towels. So they're 24 inches by 16 inches, premium microfiber towel with silk edges. So let's go ahead and open it up and, uh, show you what they look like. So that way you guys can have a good idea what they are. And again, these are on Amazon right now um for only twelve dollars twelve dollars yeah oh yeah girl look at this can you see how big this is my son said no so he couldn't see how big it was i'm sorry i'll show it to you later but this is 24 inches this is very soft i mean this is this is nice this is real nice and silk lined edge here this is silk lined edge i'm telling this is a, a hell of a deal a hell of a deal right here. Six of them for twelve dollars. Go on Walmart right or, or Amazon right now and buy you some. So again, that's a steal of a deal. That's when you buy this stuff is when you catch them on these massive deals on uh, Amazon. And I was thankful that one of my subscribers contacted me and sent me the link and was like, "Go check this stuff out. This is a killer deal. I just bought a ton of them." And uh, that's what I did. Um, I'm sorry, guys. Let me let me scroll back up through some of this. I want to make sure that I'm not uh, missing anybody's stuff. Uh, is your couch suede or leather? Uh, that one's just cloth. That's all it is. That was a kind of a hand me down from our uh, family friends. It's like a Haverty's one that they they had for a while. And this is this is the upstairs like man cave upstairs. Um, that's why I just leave it up here. It works for me. It's not like I'm trying to impress anybody. We I rarely use that, so that's what it is. My my couch downstairs, the big one. It's a big sectional couch at L. It's a leather. It's all leather. Uh. Uh, you always see Amazon boxes every day also, dude. It's my life, dude. It's all I see. Uh, dang, find myself a female doc. There are very few and far between for us. I met her when she was in college back in, what did I meet her, 2002? I met her when she was at the University of North Florida, so it's been a while. Uh, okay, now I'm starting to scroll through and catch everything. I just used regular soap and it came out fine, low heat. Yeah, that's all I have to do. Is you, so you wash it on the high, high hot water and low heat when you're actually drying it. That's all you got to do. How do I send you stuff? So in my videos, Jared, and every one of my videos, in the in the description box below, scroll down and you're going to see the P.O. box. It'll say mail, mail, uh, whatever, mail call box. And that's where my uh, P.O. box is. Feel free to check it out. If you send me anything, though, let me know. So I'll go to the post office because most of the time I go to the P.O. box and it's usually junk mail from previous people who had that uh, P.O. box. So it's kind of like, oops. Um, yeah, it is a really good deal, Rudy. You should really pick up some of these uh, stuff. I can give you a code for discount. Come guys products though through Amazon. Oh, that's cool. I uh, like you can always Google guys can always private message me through YouTube. You can private message me through Facebook. You can private message me through uh, Instagram. 
You guys can do all this stuff. You guys can contact me anytime. I might not get back to you within five minutes. It might be five hours, but I will get back to you guys. I get, I sometimes I'll have four or five messages just on Instagram alone when I check it after work or before work. And I'm like, whoa. So I got to like respond to them. It'll say like five hours ago. But I will always, always get back to you guys and uh, answer any questions I can. If not, I'll direct you into the right person I know that can help you out. You know, you're doing something right when you have a woman viewer uh, and commenter. Uh, yeah, I think my my YouTube analytics that shows it says I only have like seven percent of my viewers are female. So again, most ladies out there are not, I guess, interested in car care. We've got to get more ladies and interested in it. That if you can get a market where you can get ladies interested in taking care of their cars, you got yourself a big market. But all so many ladies like my wife, they just care about like shoes and stuff. My wife has probably a hundred pairs of shoes. That's her biggest thing. She buys shoes and shoes and shoes. And she buys so much clothes, there's no more room in the walk-in closet. And she's just piled up all over the floor. It drives me nuts. Uh, did you consider UK foamer? Uh, I don't know what a UK, uh, an IK, I don't know what you mean by that, buddy. Uh, you should do a test review on electric pressure washer. But that means I have to buy one. I don't really want to buy one. Dude, upload the Grom meat video. Um, Alex Leather Span, that will all be on my niche riding channel. I leave all motorcycle stuff on my niche riding channel. So that will definitely be on there. Give it another... A couple days to a week. I've got to get through all that footage. Remember, it was hours long ride today, hours long. And there was almost, they said they had almost 300 motorcycles show up. It was, it was chaos. I've never seen anything like it. Every, every red light we went through, we never stopped for any red light. Uh, you'd have a couple of the blockers, they call them blockers. They go up there and block all the traffic for us when we're about ready to go through. They block all the traffic like a, you know, like the motorcycle cops do for funerals. And then we all just kept going. It is the coolest thing when you don't have to stop for any red lights. You just keep plowing through every single red light. Now, if it was already red, then they would stop. But if it was, if it was green and then it was going to turn red, they they block. They were already out there blocking everyone. So it was actually really, really cool, man. As far as you can see with motorcycles, and then behind me, as far as I can see with motorcycles, it was really cool. Uh, those drying goals are awesome. I give them towels a smell test. You want a smell test? I can do a smell test for you. Probably gonna smell like just regular like whatever factory type smell to it. All right, let me get my nose ready here. It smells like the towels like Walmart or Target. That's seriously what it smells like. Yep, it smells like it's fresh out of the factory. I'll just do this. Yep, it smells like it's just out of the, uh, whatever, textile factory. That's what exactly what it smells like. <laughs> Now, not only those fuzzies up my nose, you know, because you, you always want to kind of usually want to wash your brand new microfiber towels before you use them on your car. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of lint. Many times you're going to have all that little dust bunnies and lint all over your car from those brand new fresh towels. Oh, yeah. Waffle weave. That's what I use. I use two Griot's Garage waffle weave towels of three feet long by like two, two and a half feet wide. They're amazing. Love them. What up, Viper? Did you, weren't you in here earlier? I think you were in here earlier. I don't remember. Um, uh, I have a, a 63 AMG, so I can say I like ours. Good, good. My wife would drive her old Hyundai Accent if she still could. Let me tell you that. She doesn't care about cars, so it's really good to see ladies in here. I will tell you, though, in my experience of – I don't know how old you are, Joanna. I do apologize. But in the years I've been in the car stuff, seeing just kind of like looking at cars, anytime there's a female that has a car in a car scene, it's like – you know, honey to a bear. I mean, these guys are like, Phew! they, they, every single car meet, every single get together. It doesn't matter if it's a parking lot meet or whatever. They're like, cool. So one girl, she'll have a stock car with no modifications on it at all. And everywhere she walks, she has like 10 guys around her following her everywhere. Like a little lap dog. It's the craziest thing. That was never me. I, I could, I was never going to bend over backwards for a woman. I'm like, I don't need you. There's a, you know, if, that kind of thing. I don't need you. And I'm not going to bend over backwards for you. That I know it's weird. I know a lot of women expect that, but that was never me. I would have rather stayed single my whole life. And uh, I didn't want anybody to tell me what to do, but it's the funniest thing. So I'd see girls with these stock cars with no mods on them. And these guys that spent like $5,000 in mods in their car. It looks really nice. And these guys, everybody just wants to hang around the girl. It's the funniest thing in the world. And then you get the really sad, poor sap guys out there that will actually start paying for these girls' modifications to the car and it's not like they're even married or they're dating. They're just like, hey, hey, you want some wheels? We should go out sometime. And she goes out on a date one time and buys them wheels and stuff. And you're just like, are, are you kidding me right now? Are, are you an idiot? 
she doesn't want anything from you. She's just going to milk you dry. And it's the funniest thing in the world. And you see it all the time for these poor guys that just don't see it. These girls know exactly what they're doing. And to me, I'm like, whoa. But I've seen it happen with several, several girls and different things. And the, the Honda Preludes had it when I was younger. Uh, motorcycles, for sure, definitely. Um, um, the 370Z, any of the Zs, 350, 370Zs was a girl zoop, like that all over them. Uh, GTRs. There's – in the GTR club, in Central Florida GTR club, I don't think there's one female owner. Now, I know there's female owner, GTR owners in Central Florida. You all right, Nathan? Uh-oh. He's crying, which means he'll probably come upstairs soon. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. He's crying back time. Are you okay? Are you okay? He's coming upstairs. He's coming upstairs. I'll probably end up having to cut this off here soon. It's late for me anyways. I got up so early to ride the motorcycles. Yeah, I hear him crying, so I'm probably going to have to cut this off soon. I don't know what, what's going on. I know what you mean. I, that's why the boys I meet, I grew up around the cars, though. A lot of females do it for attention. No, they do. They really do. They know the system. Are you okay? What's wrong? What's wrong? Talk. My son doesn't talk yet. They told me we have to start taking him to uh, therapy. What? You sound like you just ran a five mile run. What's wrong with you? What's wrong? Let me run downstairs real quick, guys. Let me run downstairs. This is how it gets my attention. Come on. Come on. What do you want? Come on. I'll go downstairs real quick. Come on. Sorry, guys. Duty calls. What's wrong? What's wrong? What is it? What's wrong down here? What do you need? I just changed his diaper for him, made sure he was okay, and just kind of made sure he was good to go. He's just watching Blaze and the Monster Machines. Uh, I know what you mean. I tried to boil like me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jared. Hey, now, now. Not all girls like that. That's like 85%. 95% do that. Yeah, for sure. I know. I, I've seen it happen. Um, there's some big YouTube girl. Or she's either YouTube or Instagram. And... Uh, I think they said most of her car parts were all donated. Donated, okay, from uh, other people and companies. It's really bad. Um, there's a, there's a, a, I don't know if she has a YouTube channel. She's one of these car detailing girls. And um, I, she definitely uses her female assets to take all these pictures and get all this attention. You guys probably know who she is. I don't know her, uh, but half of her pictures are, Almost provocative while she's detailing her cars and washing them. It's pretty interesting. And I'm like, wow, okay. And he, she knows what demographic she goes after. It's like, what do guys need to use in order to get the females to buy them everything? You know what I mean? It's like, I don't think that happens that way, you know? It's the 21st century. We need to change it. Um, what, did, what did you say, Cody? Uh, boy, you are smelling this sort of Puerto Rican or Chinese sort of what? Uh, Ever had any girls at the meets floor with you? No, because the GTR, Central Florida GTR is all guys. It's all men. Um, half of them are like, I'd say three of, three of them I know are, are pilots for airlines. You got a lot of business owners, like construction business owners, stuff like that. You have a lot of um, 
uh, they're high up like management uh, type of their companies. A lot of that kind of stuff in the GTR club. Like I feel like I'm probably one of the poorest ones there really is. Seriously, that's there's really no exaggeration. A lot of the GTR owners are making in the multiple six figure salary per year, you know, and so they they spend like a twelve thirteen hundred a month on a car payment like it's no big deal. Where I would be like, hell no, you know, I my car payment for my GTR is seven hundred thirty six dollars a month, and I I double that every month, but it's just because I have the money. But I would never consider a, a thirteen or fourteen hundred dollar a month car payment. Uh, no, he doesn't want public cookies. He was just I don't know what his deal was. So I changed his diaper and made sure he was okay, and I just kind of watched him. But uh, he's probably getting tired because he's been a long day for him as well. He was up at his obviously his mom's his grandma's house from her side of the family. My, my parents still live in Florida. Um, oh, Joanna got her E63 from all these guys. Joanna, I thought you said you weren't that type of girl, that you weren't worried about that stuff. I thought you said you worked hard for your car and you didn't have some guy buy you that car. I'm playing with you. I'm playing with you. What time is it in Florida? In Eastern time zone, Florida it is 12, 12.32 at night. If you're in central time zone in Florida, which is the Florida panhandle, I used to live over there, it is only 11.32 at night. So there's a one hour difference between the Florida panhandle and all of mainland Florida. Just letting you guys know for all you guys who don't know. more Most people don't know that. You know, they think all Florida is the same time zone. It's not. It's two different time zones here. Teach them sign language for some of the basic needs. Please, thank you. More hungry, all are done. Kids know more than they think. The thing, the thing is, like, we took him to the pediatrician, and one of the two doctors that met us that, uh, that live in Colorado that were my uh, wife's friends from medical uh, school, she's a pediatrician, and she said, yeah, he needs speech therapy. He, sh he should already be saying a lot of words by now, and he's not. He just, he just grunts and makes noises. He doesn't – he says maybe, like, three or four words, and that's all he says. He doesn't say anything more than that. So, you know, my wife thinks he has an issue. Like, he might have some problems later on in life. Um we don't know. The, the main doctor says he doesn't think there's any problems because uh, he can stop at any time. Like he, he makes some weird gestures and she's kind of like, is there something wrong with him? Being that she's a doctor. But uh, the pediatrician says he he's like, I've been doing this for 35 years. If he can do stop it on his own and start whenever he wants, he's doing that more than likely as attention. Not because there's a, an actual like a, an issue, but he should be speaking by now, at least saying some general words to you. Self-made here. It's my girl. That's my girl. I don't even know you. I'm just saying <laughs> it's good to hear, you know. Um, you know, it, she can be the same thing. Um, one of the cars that she likes that she actually thinks is really pretty is a Dodge Viper. And I said, uh, you can easily afford a nice used Dodge Viper. They're only like sixty something thousand dollars. And she's like, nah, why would I spend my money on that? She's like, I don't care about cars that much. She likes them that she thinks the Dodge Vipers are really pretty, but she said it would be a waste. She won't even drive my GTR. She refuses to drive my GTR. I said it would be a great YouTube video. I said those videos that where your wife drives the G GTRs, anything to do with GTR stuff, usually get a lot of views. And uh, but she absolutely refuses to, and it makes me so mad. I'm like Terry. I was like, you can get, we can get great views with that. Maybe new subscribers. I was like, you need to just drive the damn thing down the road and let me record it on YouTube. Put the GoPros up, and she's like, no, I'm not going to drive your car. You're going to get so mad at me if I even do anything wrong with it. And I'm like, you're just going to drive down the street. There's nothing's going to happen. She's like, no, I'm not driving your car. I'm like, Pfft. so it really kind of like, ah, oh. oh, what do we got here? You should record the car show when you go as well. I have before in the past. I've done like the Central Floor GTR meet. I've done Detail Fest. You guys got CD Detail Fest from Auto Geek. As a matter of fact, Auto Geek shared my video with their actual uh facebook group which was really cool i didn't know auto geek was following me i guess auto geek follows me and they shared my video on their um feed so that was really cool cg review besides the towels um uh, i don't know i really don't know i have the microfiber towel cleaner and then i have what else do i have I have their leather, their over the over the counter leather cleaner that I got to try, and that's about it. She likes to vibe because of the shape. I don't know. She just said they look really cool. She liked it a lot, so it was really cool. I'm guessing she would rather spend her money on red bottoms. No, honestly, I know what you're talking about, but she just rides regular shoes. She doesn't need the high end shoes. She just wants a lot of regular shoes. That's her. Like, oh my god, this sparkle. I need this sparkle because it has this. But did you see? It's in just a, this little bit of tan versus this little bit of tan. It sees the difference. I'm like. 
it'll match. No, it won't. I've got to buy it. It's my money. I'm buying it. And that's just generally how it goes with her. It's pretty funny. Um, uh, any investments thought on relative thing right now, our investment is paying off every one of our debts. Um, we pay way extra on our debts. She has less than a year and a half and she will be out of completely out of medical school student loans. They'll be all paid off about 15 years early. I paid so much extra heavy. Some of her med student loans weren't due until 2035, 2035 is when some of them are due and I'll have them paid off by 2019. Everything hundred percent paid off because I pay so much extra on it. Um, I pay extra on the cars, way extra on the cars. Um, I pay extra. I don't let the credit cards build up. I just, I use debit card for everything. I pay cash basically, essentially. Um, that's the way the cruise, I just paid cash for the cruise. I called them up, paid off immediately. Didn't bat an eye. I was like, it's done. I'm not running up the credit card for the cruise. Once that gets all done, we, we might think about something, but I, she has 401k. I have, uh, obviously I have my own stuff. So that's where a lot of our money goes. Uh, she will not do anything out there with me. She hates the heat. She's one of those ones that just wants to say, stay, stay inside the house all day long. Have you seen any Adams polishes boxes on your, uh, what? Uh, I see you next Sunday, Mother's Day. Yeah, I'll be here. I'll be here. Unboxing videos sooner or something. What's the box behind you? Oh, uh, this just came in. Um, so chemical, chemical guys through Amazon had a great deal on microfiber towels. You can see it. They had six of these towels for only $12. And these are their big super plush towels for $12. So it's a killer, killer deal. Yeah, this is the exact same as the yellow ones. They're really, hopefully, you got, I know the camera's not going to show good quality, but they're super soft. They're silk lined edge towels. Really, really good. But they have a deal right now on Amazon. One of my subscribers wrote me. You get six of them. So I got this six plus this six. It's only $24. And then I had just bought the, the car, the whatever wash. And I have I have Prime, so I didn't pay for shipping at all. And um, it just came in. So I have tons more microfiber towels. So that puts me up to like 70 microfiber towels. It's nuts. I can be really lazy if I want to and not wash for like two months before I ever have to wash them. It's great. Um, how do you pay cash for a cruise? Um, yeah, I use the debit card, Cody. That's all. That's how I do it. So and it comes right out of my checking account. I will not, I don't use a credit card unless I'm buying something online. That's how I do it. My favorite shoes are the black and gray bottom top sneakers after wearing three days in the most comfortable shoes on earth. I have no idea. I like, I like the Reebok Zigs. I love them. They, I thought they discontinued them. Well, they brought them back out. I love the Reebok Zigs. They're so comfortable. Uh, best way to clean paper or cash money into the bank. What? You mean like, uh, uh, you know, like those, those cleaners that uh, take drug money and then they clean it up and then they put them back out? I don't know. There's a lot of places down there in Miami. Joanna, that's probably what Joanna does. She probably uh, cleans money for drug dealers. And that's how uh, she got buys her Mercedes. Because you know Miami is like cocaine land. Have you ever seen these at Adams? No, Adams ships through FedEx, from what I remember. So I have not seen them. Um, who? Some of the companies, AutoGeek used to use them, but they don't. They switch to FedEx, and a lot of things you just don't see. You have honestly you have no idea. Favorite foam cannon soap at the moment. Do you filter your hose water? No, it's just whatever taps straight out of the hose. Join it. Um. Here's the thing. I like a lot of foam soaps like this, the snow foam soap that you get from Chemical Guys or Masterson's one that you guys got to see in the thing. But here's one thing I really like. I love Limitless Car Care's Limitless Lather. It is it's probably the best car wash I've ever used in the two-bucket system, but it's also absolutely mind-blowing in the foam can because it's made for the foam can as well as two-bucket system. Highly recommended. I, I recommend everybody go check out some of Limitless Car Care's videos. Stellar results. Absolutely mind-blowing results. Uh, it's, they're based out of New York, and uh, I would say they're worth every penny. I think you, they have like flat rate shipping of like $6 and change right now. So even if you bought 100 different bottles, <laughs> they would lose a lot of money on shipping because they only charge you like $6 and change on shipping. It's absolutely amazing quality product. So I love them, love them, love them. Um. Pay everything with a credit card. Always pay it off. Then we get the cash back rewards. Yeah, we don't have cash back rewards. 
Oh, so that's otherwise it would be pointless. Yeah, I love the Adams uh, paint sealant. It's going to be lost longer in the wax. Ollie's Bargain Market has a gallon of Meguiar's Deep Crystal Soap. Ew, Deep Crystal. I think that sounds pretty cheap, Zach. Is the microfiber deal still active? Uh, Dunzor, as far as I know, um, let me go. If you guys, I will look at uh, my Amazon real quick. Bear with me. Let me go to Amazon and then I'll let you know. I'll go to my orders. Orders. Yes, they are still active. I'll got, I'll put links for you guys in there, and you guys can uh, see it right now. They are still active. There is a link for you for the yellow ones. And here is the link for the red ones. And you can pick red or blue. There. And those are the ones I just bought now. And I, they some of them offer different colors. These are just the colors that I got. I was like, I don't have any red ones, so I'll get red ones. And they're su I mean, these are super soft. Oh yeah, they're good. They're good, super soft and uh, really good. Now, what I would use is recommend for these. I would only use these on your car's paint. That's it. Not in the interior. Only on your car's paint. You can get some cheaper ones on the interior cars or the wheels or uh, engine bay. Only use the best ones you have for your car's paint. That way, these only touch there, and you're not going to uh, pick up anything and just scratch your car's paint with it. Oh, fresh out of a textile factory. I'm sure in China somewhere. Uh, yep, made in China. There you go. 70% polyester, 30% polyamide. I'm sure I said that wrong. Sorry. Sorry. That's actually a good price. Very good price. Excellent price. Normally, that's 20 something dollars for each one of those. And if for $12 and change, go buy yourself some right now. And again, they come in different colors. These are just the colors I personally picked. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Well worth the difference between the red and the thing. Um, supposedly, this is a premium one, Joanna. But when I compare them side by side, I don't see a lot of difference, to tell you the truth. Maybe uh, the pile here is a little bit. Uh, it's not as a fluffy pile, but it's still, this is pretty stinking soft right here. And again, they're the same price anyway. So it really doesn't matter. They're, these are 26 inches long. Was it 26 inches or is it 24 inches, 24 inches long. So they're two feet long by like 16 inches tall. Look at that. This is huge. And she says it all the time, all the time. Just trust me on this one. So there we go. But definitely, that, that's a killer deal. If you guys need some microfibers, that is a killer deal right now. Go buy your some. The red is called Fluffer. Whatever. They, they feel almost identical. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> Do you think Chemical Guys products that are dumb? Not dumb. A lot of their products are watered down. You just kind of kind of weed through it. Look at reviews. Don't look at the reviews on their website. They ban all. They ban negative reviews. Reviews on their website. They've been called out. They've actually had it. I've had subscribers screenshot it and send it to me, where they left a negative review and they uh, delete the comment or remove it, or they don't post the comment saying it didn't meet their criteria, and it was just a basic standard comment about what the product was. So. You know, that, that's why I say, you know, go and look at some other reviews on their product before you buy it. Any special way to wash inside the door jam where the hinges are? What's up, Extreme Hand? I just use um, an all-purpose cleaner or a detailer, and that's how I get in the door jams. And then I just use one of my uh, cheaper microfiber towels, and I run all the way through it. Now, on your um, the rubber seals, what you do is just kind of like – you can soak it in your uh, microfiber, like so you squirt it in here, and then grab the, the actual rubber seal like this, and then rub your hand, drag your hand all around the entire door seal all the way down. So that way you're cleaning both sides of the door seal at the same time. And if you get a nice protectant, that's probably the best way. Get yourself a nice like a uh, protectant that'll give you UV protection or any type of rubber that'll be good for rubber and trim. That's probably the best way for you to clean those things out is the rubber. So that's how I usually clean my door jams. Uh, it keeps lagging. I apologize, Key Bass. You need to get better internet, buddy. Go buy some better internet. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. It's okay. Sorry about that. It is getting pretty late, and I am getting pretty tired here. And uh, so I do feel it right now. I can. I feel it. Even though we got 33 people online, we got 51 likes, man. That's pretty good. If you guys haven't hit a like button, drop a kind like for me. 
uh, let us know that you are here and that because um, these actually videos do get decent amount of views later on. You'd be surprised. Well, let's say we get 500 views during the live stream. Well, the, over the next week, I'll gain like another thousand views over it because people like say what they tell me is they they watch this later on down the road, like during while well, they're at work or when they're bored, they just leave it running in the background. They just listen to us talk over here. It's pretty crazy. Best leather cleaner and conditioner. Dude, there's so many. I love M Mother's VLR is really good out there. I like VLR. Mother's makes some good stuff. I haven't tried McGuire's new balm uh, leather conditioner. I haven't tried that at all yet, but um, the Mother M McGuire's one, I'm sorry, is a, it's a pretty good one. But M Mother's VLR, they got some good uh, leather cleaner stuff too as well. Jefferson between red and the yellow. Uh, not as far as the pile might be. A little bit fluffier on the yellow, as you can see it, maybe a little little bit fluffier here versus the red, but only by um are talking a very minute. Like the pile, the height of it is actually a little bit higher than the actual, let's just call it the pile here. It's just a little bit taller. Now you can kind of see them side by side. Hopefully that shows. See how this is a little bit taller than this one, but they're both super soft, but just giving you a heads up. How do you correctly wash microfiber towels? Well, Joanna, that's a good question. While we're at it, Joanna, let's let's show you what I have. Now, the proper way to do it, let's say you only have your detergent at your house down there in Coral Gables. Wash it on high, hot water, but when you dry it, dry it on low heat, low heat, even fluff it, whatever. Just don't use hot heat because the hot heat from a dryer can actually melt the microfiber of the fabrics. So you don't want to do that. So you wash it on high heat, but just low low heat when you're drying it or put it on fluff. But if you go buy yourself some Chemical Guys microfiber wash, you can you too can make your microfiber smell fruity-licious. But uh, yeah. Uh, no lag here. See, see, Kia, you need to buy a better internet, buddy. What would you tell a 25-year-old, Chad? Um don't get into debt. Whatever you do, I don't care how nice that car is and you think you can make that payment. If you say you think you can make that payment, you can't afford that payment. I don't care what it is. If you think you can afford it, you can't afford it more than likely. One little thing comes up and you are suddenly dead broke and that's just the way it goes. Would you go back in time or jump forward a few years? Hmm. I like to see the technology jump in the future. So I'd like to see us, like, let's say, colonizing the moon or colonizing Mars. I'd like to see that a lot. Um, so technology would be fun. So I'd probably say if I would, if I could have a time machine, I'd go to the future. Uh, why did you order? Because, Cody, because Chemical Guys had the deal running through Amazon versus – if you go to Chemical Guys' website, these are not on sale. These are still $20-something dollars for a six-pack. And they – through Amazon right now, they're running the deal. So that's why I got it through Amazon. Um, Joanne, for a long time, I used regular detergent. I didn't see much of a difference. I'll tell you that to tell, be honest with you. When I did use my first microfiber wash, I did notice a difference. They felt like they were more clean and it just gave a really light scent to it. They don't, it doesn't have a lot of scent in them. Uh, this is maybe my first time using chemical guys. I've been using master since, uh, microfiber and they were really good. And I, I could tell, like, you know, because when you're using it for sealants and waxes, well, what happens when water hits sealants and waxes? It naturally just ro rolls off. So, of course, it's not truly cleaning the microfibers. Where this is supposedly supposed to break down the, the sealants and the waxes and the polymers to technically wash them all off and make it nice and fluffy clean again. So, and extend the life of your microfibers. Can I 100% say it does that? No, I can't say that. But that's what they claim in all their writing. Just letting you know. Do you use fabric softener? Uh, no, I, I don't use any of that stuff in my stuff. Just regular stuff. Throw it in there and light, light, low heat or tumble, and that's all I do. Things because of my downstairs, I need a Wi-Fi extender. You should. You should, Kia. Now, my you're on my gaming PC right now, and it's hardwired to the the, the modem there. But this modem is 5G modem, and then I have a, there's another modem, and that house out of the house is like 2.4 gigahertz or whatever so that's the way it is so that side of the house gets internet wi-fi and this side of the house gets because the house is we have a 3600 square foot house so it's all spread out and uh, with the center block walls and stuff it kind of blocks the signal 
Uh, good job, Super Dave. Good job. The nice cheap ones for me to stock up on. Any ideas for keeping your rubber trim from freezing to the door frame? I have no idea. I honestly have no idea about that one. Uh, you'd have to go to somewhere that uh, deals with all that stuff. Um, definitely some kind of rubber protection or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, you could you could check and see if Trojan or uh, Durex has anything. You know, I'm, I'm just guessing here. I, I don't know, but I, I I don't I don't have that experience in Florida. I never have. Um, well, the video is keeping it up, Chad. Not all car care savvy people out there like us. You know, I'm just doing it for the hobby, buddy. I do as a hobby. I still work my my main job. I have a lot of fun with it. And uh, that's the way it is. I'm not trying to sell you anything because I don't own the company. I don't own a company. And uh, we're just having fun out here. I can show you what I try and show you the results. And I give you my thoughts. And that's the way it goes. I've seen a lot of YouTubers trying to come along and copy me. Some don't do very good at all. And that's just the way it goes. I've had some people blatantly come in here and spam their channel. They immediately get banned from my channel. I'm like... I don't go to your channel and spam my channel. Don't come to mine. Um, I, but I don't try and compete with any YouTube channels. They just do them, and I do me. That's the way it goes. As long as we're having some fun. Uh, yeah, you, I bet some Trojan you know, lube would really help you out with the door jams, especially those rubbers. You don't want those rubbers getting hard. They'll get all brittle, and they'll break on you, buddy. You don't want that at all. Mm -mm, no way. Uh, any pets? No. When uh, my parents got divorced and uh, they moved out of state, out of the state of Florida, I had a cat. Um, we had like four or five cats in our house, but one of the cats was mine. I got it from an ex-girlfriend who just happened to be a stripper. We're just, that's a whole other story we'll get to another day. But uh, anyways, back on topic, um, uh, she had a Siamese kitten. It was half Siamese and half Persian. So I had the long hair of the Persian, but it was Siamese colors. And... Um, I actually got it donated. Uh, she she gave it to me and said, hey, it's yours. Take it because we're going to take it to the pound. I'm like, oh, hell no. You're not going to take this kid to the pound. So I got the thing. And anyways, my mom now has it, and she has it with her. And the, the, she, I think that cat's now like 14 or 15 years old now. Yeah, it's about 14 or 15. Yeah, about 14. So it's been a long time since she's had it. And that's my cat. But the cat's still alive and going. It's a big, big old uh, fluff ball like this, but it's – Every time I come around, it will still come up to me and sit on my lap and lay on me. If I stay the night there, she'll still sleep next to me and everything. It's just, I was so sad, but I, I where I lived, I wasn't allowed to have animals. When I, uh, when I, when they got divorced, moved out, I, I rented my own place, a two bedroom place, and I wasn't allowed to have animals at all. So I never did have animals, and I didn't want to separate those cats, the one cat from all the other cats. It would have been just kind of like hard, so I didn't do that. I just let her keep the cat. Um, I used to have a Siamese cat has used on as a, yeah, I, I love cats. They're so laid back and so chill. They would sit on my lap while I'm on play computer games. They'd sit up on the computer. They would sit down there at my feet. They never bothered you. They're really laid back and it was a lot of nice, a lot of fun. But again, I'm always allowed to have it. We travel too much now where we can't have animals. Uh. Um, Cody, you're like spamming all kinds of stuff, buddy. <laughs> YouTube is kind of flagging your stuff. Just letting you know. Like I see what you, what is flagging. So I'm just letting you know. She is giving you a heads up. She's giving you a heads up there, Cody. Sorry, Joanna, if, we're, if we lost you here. I don't want to like offend you or anything like that. So, cause everybody's going in here. What, what? Okay. I'm trying to catch up on everybody's stuff. Just letting you know. I had a bunch of, um, damn it. Stupid side thing. Um, yeah, I had a couple uh, private messages I had to catch up on. Still listening. Yeah, she's probably like, I'm so offended right now. You're talking about all these bad things. That's Cody. That's Cody. That's not me, Joanna. That's Cody. I just told you about a girl that I used to date years ago, and I dated her before. I knew what she did on the evening job uh, down there at the club. I met her, and then I found out a little while later what she did is her evening job. So I was like, oh, but that was, that was a different story. And that was very interesting, very interesting times. He's got some good questions though. Good questions. Yeah. I see. I get a lot of private messages through uh, Instagram, a lot of press messages through Facebook. People write me all the time. I get this nonstop. So I'm not the only one. 
People are sending me pictures. Um, I don't know what they sent me. West before and after, and what it looks like this. Do you know how I can I get it back to normal? What I, I don't even know what you did to it, so I can't tell. He put something. I, I don't know what he did, but this guy like did something. Good night, Kia. Thanks so much for stopping by, dude. I appreciate it. Best part about dating stripper, she was a freak. That's all you need to know, Cody. She was a freak. That's all you need to know. Um, was that one of the good questions, Joanna? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I would just say that she was a freak, and that was a lot of fun. So that was good. Uh, you really don't want to deal with it, Cody. Most of them are really trashy. Most of them are very trashy. Uh, me, maybe Cody can meet. The thing is, you, you with most of those people, you would never know it. You seriously would never know it. If you saw them, you would never think it. Uh, these are just normal chicks that I'm going to work and I work the evenings. Okay. And then, okay, cool. And they work, or they'll say they work at a bar or they work, at, it's just some store down, down on what's my call. Oh, okay. And then you find out later on, you're like, oh, that's what you do. You know, that it's that kind of thing. So it's pretty funny. Brunettes, brunettes, Cody. And uh, Joanna, if she's blonde, she's probably going to be like offended. Oh. So, oh, well, man, what time is it? Jesus, it's been three hours, guys. I'm going to go ahead and probably wrap this up in the next 15 minutes. I am beyond tired. I need to get a shower. I need to get cleaned up. I am very, very tired, and I'm ready to go collapse. So I'm going to sleep so good tonight and uh, really just pass out. Oh, well, then, Bruno, see, Joanna is good to go then. Joanna is good to go with us here, the, the thing. I don't know what it is. A blonde just... Don't get me wrong here for all you guys that date blonde ladies and for any blonde ladies who watch later on. Blondes just seem to be dumb. I'm not saying that in a bad way, but they're just like airheaded and dumb. And that's just not what I'm attracted to. I like intelligence. I like somebody I can sit down and talk with. I don't want to like, oh my God, I hear like totally what happened in like, oh my God, I went to the beach and like, I can't deal with that. I just can't deal with that. I'd rather be single. And that's why I like brunettes because usually they're uh, a little bit smarter or a lot smarter, let's just say. Redheads are also amazing, but if you find a good-looking redhead, which is very hard to find. So those are my my picks. I don't smoke at all, Cody. I don't smoke at all. Um, redheads, yes. As long as they're good-looking redheads, which are rare, yes, they're very good-looking. Uh, do you recommend the red or the microfiber? Okay, the red just seems to be a little bit more plush, but I definitely recommend either one. I don't think you're going to have a problem with either one of these. They're very, very good. You know, I just, I want to bury my face in it. It's just so soft. Ah, oh, it's so good. It really is. You know, it's just, it's super soft, super plush. Definitely highly recommend it. The same with that. It's just the pile, the little fingers on it. I don't know if you guys are going to see that. Are, are just, are they're a little bit longer on this, this premier plush over the red ones. That's about it. Honestly, if you're, why don't you guys do the same thing? If you're looking to buy those links that I showed you earlier, buy one of each, seriously, and then you can see for yourself. At twelve dollars for six of them, you you can't even get a better deal like that at Walmart. Walmart is they have really thin, just garbage ones. So the cool thing is you have the long there, and then the short nap over here. You see how much shorter it is over here? So this is good for more, but more of your like uh, buffing off some stuff and whatever. So. You got one for one type and one for the other. It works out really good. Well, Mike, I don't know what you need to do, Mike. Maybe you need to go down to the club. I don't know what you need to do, but we don't want you turned off here, Mike. Do you remember the red? Or, uh, do you recommend? Um, if uh, I'm guessing this yellow is supposed to be like for high, high-end detailing. This is really a lot more plush. But these, the red here is still, it's still super soft. I don't see you ever having a problem with this. But this is definitely a higher. Let's see if I can show it to you a little bit closer. See how much taller it is? Like this is a lot taller and this is a lot shorter. So I guess this is more for more of a high-end luxury microfiber where the other one's not. So I'm just giving you guys a heads up. Have you ever smoked before? No, I, I've never been attracted to smoking. I don't like smoking at all. It's just bleh. I hate it. Redheads are hot. As long as they're good looking, there's a lot of bad looking redheads. Not my type. Not my type. Uh, best paste wax. Oh, I love Pinnacle Sovereign for Carnuba. It's amazing. You get it auto geek. It won't last more than about two months, though. It starts fading fast. But damn, that stuff is amazing. It makes your car look 10 times more expensive than it is. Long, long term would be probably like a Meguiar's Ultimate, 
or um, Turtle Wax Ice. Those last you about, let's say five to six months is a fair amount for before it'll start fading. Honestly, guys, spend your money on sealant. Sealant, a bottle of that is like $33, $34, and that stuff is going to last you for years. Seriously, you use so little of it. It's so easy to wipe off. Unlike waxes, it'll like, you know, they dry on there and like hard to get off sometimes. It'll hurt your shoulder. Sealants, when they come off, it's just like, it's just like this when it comes off. You have to wait 20 minutes on a sealant. You apply it and it literally is like this. And it's just, okay, it's all clean. And you're like, that's it? And you're like, yeah, that's it. It's great. Absolutely great. 60th like in here. Thank you so much, Joanna. Really do appreciate it. And I'm glad to see more ladies getting interested in it. Yes, I know you have a Mercedes. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad, but it's rare that we have ladies in here. Martha is the only other one, and then there's a, a girl on the panhandle floor that comes in once in a while, her and her husband. So I can't remember her name. I think her husband's in the Air Force or something like that. So she comes in once in a while. But it's always Martha, you're new here, and there was always one or two other girls. But for the most part, it's just a, it's just a guy-dominated industry, and it's just the way it is. You know, most guys think – like uh, cars more. Thanks so much, Extreme Ham, for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. Kingsley Toy. Okay. Okay, Samba Kingsley. You're in the 21st century. Welcome. Hopefully, you voted for uh, whatchamacallit then, uh, since you identify as a female, as uh, for Hillary Clinton. She didn't win. Sorry. But hopefully, you voted for a, a woman to win. <laughs> Just uh, going for it, because I'm sure she'd be totally about you uh, identifying as a female. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and wrap this up in about another 10 minutes. Let's do 10 more minutes. Anything you can shoot me, any question you want, feel free. I'll be glad to help you out. Go ahead and shoot them to me now. We'll go from there. Any guys want to stalk Joanna, go ahead and stalk Joanna. She lives in Coral Gables. It's a really high-end neighborhood of Miami. She's a baller. She'll take care of you. She'll be your uh, mama or uh, your uh, baby mama if you need it. Just messing with you. Uh, 10 lions or 100 sheep. Lions, of course. You want? I want killers. Once you have killers, you can you can kill whatever you want. You can have kill as many sheep as you want. What phone do you use? I use the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, and my wife has the iPhone 8 Plus. Um, no, Joanna. As long as you take care of me, I don't care about these other guys. Just take care of me, Joanna. That's all we need. Not a big person on Mercedes, but I could live with one. I could live with one for a short time. Favorite technology right now? I don't know, really. I'll tell you the truth. Smartphones have come such a long way where they almost do everything you need. It is really, really nice. And I do like that smartphones have come so far in the world. They give us so much technology. It's, it's great. Cars, obviously, technology-wise, has been leaps and bounds over the last 20 years where it's just – you know, cars from 20 years ago are just getting – the fastest cars they made are just getting just smoked by family sedans now. Family sedans doing 0 to 16 under, you know, five seconds. That's unheard of 20 years ago. You just didn't have that. Race cars from 30 years ago are slower than cars you can buy off the lot nowadays. It, it just – technology is booming right now in the car industry. Obviously, and more and more is leading towards the electric cars. I get that. Probably we're still another 20 years off from really solid electric cars every, everywhere, but that is where technology is leading for sure. They're fast as hell. It's the recharging thing that's going to take the longest to uh, get over it. You know what I mean? Have you tried VR? No. Um, you have the same phone as me. Uh, what big purchases you want to make next as a goal? I would like to start saving up for a second house out in the mountains in Colorado or Montana. Just a small little three-bedroom house. That way I could stay there most of the time um, and get out of Florida. Like just where I have my Florida home, but I also have like a small mountain home, like a, a three-bedroom, two-bath home where every day I look outside and I see the Rocky Mountains, you know, and just have the whole difference of uh, climate change and everything. So when it starts getting cold, I'm like, deuces, I'm out. I'm going back to my home in Florida and uh, doing that stuff. And also getting where it, I'm, I don't live in the biggest city anymore. And I can also uh, have a little bit of room, you know what I mean? So I can do what I want, um, go exploring, maybe hike the trails, go through the mountains, that kind of thing, you know, ride motorcycles, dirt bikes to the mountain trails, that kind of thing, which we don't have here in Florida. I think that would be a lot of fun. Maybe go skiing some more. I've, I've skied about, I don't know, five or six times in my life. And I, I, like, I, I like snow skiing a lot. 
Um, that would like to do a little bit more than that. That would be fun. A thousand horsepower minivan. I highly doubt it. Maybe like 350, 400 horsepower. I don't see you getting much more than that. Would you ever move to California? No way in hell. Way too tax heavy for me. Way too liberal for me personally. Uh, way too many rules and laws that the rest of the states don't even have to deal with. It's just, it's too much of uh, Big Brother controlling things out there, and the taxes are outrageous, and too much of the hippie lifestyle that I'm not personally into. Would you ever move to New York? The same problem. New York uh, is overrun. Like New York City dominates New York, so upstate New York is really nice, and uh, you know, normal down to earth people. But New York City, because the population dominates everything, and they just to me, the state gets ruined because of that. You know, you get taxes are out of control out there. Housing prices are out of control in New York. Uh, I don't like some of the rules they have. It's just that's why the people are the people are flooding here to Florida. I if you don't leave my neighborhood and see a New York license plate within two minutes, you're not in Kissimmee. I'm not lying when I'm talking to you about that. Uh, they said two thousand people a day are moving to Florida a day. Two thousand people, not from all just New York, but from northern states to Florida, 2,000. It's, it's insanity. Uh, what's a career you can go to as a 20-year-old? Anything medical. If you are in the medical field, you will never not have a job, and you will get paid very good. Uh, Generac pressure washer, 10, all day long, solid. It, it, I don't use it for months on end. I turn it on, starts right up. Put the choke down. One or two pulls, it starts up immediately, then slowly turn the choke up, you know, and it just runs like a champ. After after you start up once after the winter, you don't ever have to worry about it again. It'll start strong every time. It's just from sitting for a couple months during the winter. It's usually when it happens. Right, I'll be 3100 PSI. Uh, um, Maria, I don't think I would go for that. I would definitely go for something. You don't need that much power in electric. Yeah, electric would probably be like 1800 PSI is all you really need. Why are people moving to Florida? There is no state sales tax here. None. Housing is relatively cheap, but prices are going up. Um, everything is a, it's warm here most of the year round. Central Florida, the lowest we got last Chris, last Christmas, last winter was like 37 degrees. This is as low as we got here in Florida, at least in Central Florida. North Florida gets a lot colder. They get into the teens all the time, but not Central and South Florida. Um, again, it's there's no state, state sales taxes. All you're doing is paying the county's taxes, and that's whatever your county's at. It's just a lot cheaper. I'll give you an example. You can live on the waterfront and like the intercoastal waterfront on Coco in Coco, Florida, for like four hundred thousand dollars. Four hundred thousand dollars, you can have a small three bedroom, two bathroom house on the intercoastal. You would do that in Miami, as Joanna would tell you, and get ready to drop ten million dollars. It's just insane. So parts of Florida are still dirt cheap, and you can really have whatever you want. Like you can buy right down the street from me is a, I think it's an acre and a half or two acres of land on uh, the big giant lake here, Lake Toho. And uh, it's only sells for like 90 or a hundred thousand dollars for that acre and a half, two acres where again, if it was Miami, you'd be paying in the million dollars. If it was Miami on the water, it's just, it's there's, you can do so good here with so little. What editing program I use CyberLink power director. What do you think of Chemical Guys overrated? I think some of their stuff is overrated. Some of their stuff is very good, but some of their stuff is watered down. How much do you get on your pressure washer for? How much did you get it? I bought it from Home Depot for $280 with free shipping. Uh, detailing seats. Um, I don't have a detailing seat. I just uh, get on my knees like, uh, and I do everything there on my knees. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. So that's what it, how it is. Uh, I am not the biggest fan of uh, Mercedes, Alex. I know Joanna is going to come hit me over the head, but I'm not the biggest fan of Mercedes. Um, that's what it is. Should I get a PF22? I don't even know what that is. So no, I don't know. I don't know. All right, guys, we got two more minutes. Let's do two more minutes. Crash course questions, lightning round. Hit me with them. Hit me with them as fast as you want, and I'll answer them real quick. Uh, better to wax a vehicle during a cloudy day, sure, uh, or a garage. Doing a garage, it doesn't matter as long as you're out of the sun. Ha, MTM, like you're talking about a, a foam cannon. MTM foam cannons, I heard are great. Have you ever been in a fight? Yes. Um, 
Have you ever been robbed? Uh, our house has been robbed when I lived in South Florida when I was a little kid. I've had two cars broken into. Nothing was stolen, though. Um, yeah. Best over-the-counter sealant. Ugh. I don't know if you can get any sealant over-the-counter right now. Have you ever been dumped? I don't think so. Most of the time, I it, it comes to a head where you're just like headbutting each other, and it's just like, you know what? This ain't working. And you just kind of go your own ways, and you just say, hey, you know what? Uh, it's time to let each other go. And that's the way it usually went down. Kimmel guys versus Adams. I would say Adams is better. Meaning of life is to get your ass to work so that the rich can get richer and the poor can stay poor. That's how it works, buddy. Get used to it. Longest relationship was dating my wife. We dated for, we dated for six years before we got married. I gave her the ring after five years. Aaron, what's up? We're about to get offline. You are super late to the party. It's your fault, Aaron. It's all your fault, buddy. Last second questions, last second questions. Shoot them at me, shoot them at me, shoot them at me. And I'm going to think, good first car, Honda Civic. Honda Civic, all day long. It'll hold its resale value, solid car, solid engine, and it doesn't look like crap. What age did you have your first kid? 36 years old, 36. Like I said, I'm not young, guys. I'm not a little kid. Should you end on good terms or bad terms? Uh, probably good terms. It's always better to be polite, just to you know, just do things, you know, to stop it before it gets to that kind of a level. That's the way I see it. You know, if you start yelling, it's time for you to get out of there. Um, swirl marks with a polish. You need to get a polish, like a McGuire Ultimate polish. Was your kid on purpose or an accident? She, we discussed that we would, uh, well, the first two years of marriage, she would stay on birth control. And then after that, she would come off birth control. But I kind of made sure that I didn't uh, try and get her pregnant, let's put it that way, for about a year. And then um, then she got pregnant when we basically actually tried, like instantly she was pregnant. And that's just the way it went down. You look like you're 28. Well, I'm not 28. I'll tell you that. I'm a lot older. I'm older than that. Add 10 more years to that. What's the video for tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow is OxyClean wheel cleaner. So you'll see it. It's the, the trigger just is garbage. The trigger part of it is such a cheap trigger that it goes from being a nice spray to a little dribble and then it just clogs up. It's it's garbage part. Terrible. Sorry, I was late for a freeway in Las Vegas. I didn't want to use data. Oh, you do it. Aaron, we had to go to unlimited data with Verizon. My son's been using the iPad every restaurant we get to. It's pretty crazy. OxyClean weed cellar. What the heck? Yep. They made it. So no tips to wash money. So no tips to wash money. Must be expended on GTR or no. It's only expensive for repairs if you need to repair them. But by then you probably only you own like three or four cars, so you don't have to worry about it. And um, well, the payment is probably a lot. It's all about putting down as much money as you possibly can. I put down $24,000 on it. I financed $45,000 with your tax tag title, all the state fees and all we had to pay. I, I financed $45,000 on the GTR. Boo, T-Mobile all day. I have Verizon. It's been perfect. Uh, do you go to an independent shop or, or Nissan for maintenance? Um, I took it to an independent sports shop that does uh, – they specialize in Nissan GTRs in Winter Garden, Florida. That's where I took it. T-Mobile is what my wife had when we were first dating, and it kept dropping and dropping and dropping, and finally I brought them over to the Verizon side, and we never had a problem again. It was uh, pretty good. AT&T screwed, screwed me and my family big time when we were younger. It was so bad that we dropped them. It was, it was bad. All right, guys, last-minute questions. Joanna, are you still here? Are you the only girl? Oh, we had Marie in here earlier. Joanna, are you still here? Exhaust for GTR. It has an exhaust on it. It has a Tanabe medallion exhaust. It came with it. Um, but that's all it has on right now. Yay! Joanna's still here. I thought Joanna like hit ran away and she was like, I'm out of here, bitches. I'm going to bed because I'm sure you uh I don't know. Do you work during the day, Joanna, or you work from home or do you work at night? I don't know, because I work evenings, so I don't go in until the evenings. Um, so that's what it is. So tomorrow will be probably test out some more products tomorrow because I'm exhausted. I want to go to sleep now, so I'll be up early tomorrow. So which will be great. I'll let my son sleep in late. So I, when he's asleep, I sneak outside and get some videos done for you guys. Would you ever let HP Logic work on your car? Um, they're in West Palm Beach. Um, I don't know. I really, I, I've heard some good things about them, but I don't know. What year is your GTR? Is it 2013? 2013. 
Um, Accord or Camry? Hmm. I wasn't happy when Accord pulled the V6, and I think that's really hurt them in sales. Uh, sales are much lower than they expected. Overall, I like the Accord better looking. It, I've been in the brand new Accord, and it is a stellar car inside. Tons of room, very luxurious for what it is. Uh, I own a boutique work during the day. I owe you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That works out perfectly for you. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you a story. I was at the G Central Florida GTR meet at Ace Cafe in downtown Orlando last weekend. When we were on the way to downtown Disney on Interstate 4, um, a gold GTR came up besides me. And this person wasn't at the Central Florida GTR meet. I was like, to see a GTR is kind of rare. And they pulled up beside me. It was a woman. You know, she was a Spanish girl. I'd say she was probably mid to late 30s. And she was like, hey. And I'm like, hey. You know, it's kind of that kind of thing. You go, oh, you got a GTR? I got a GTR. And uh, that was one of the only girls I've ever seen driving a GTR. And uh, it was an R35. It was like a 2017. It was one of those gold ones. And she said she owned some kind of uh, shop, and that's why she couldn't be there. And it was probably like a boutique like her. She owned some kind of shop, and that's what it was. And she said that's why she couldn't go. So we're on Interstate 4, like, you know, heavy traffic on I-4 with terrible drivers from up north, and nobody knows how to drive. Oh, there's Disney. Oh, shit, I'm going to turn here, and they hit each other. Well, so we were talking the whole time, so it was pretty cool. But uh, she had to go. I, I guess she lives somewhere in Kissimmee. Come so she came down this way, and we had to stay and go towards on I-4 into Disney. So I didn't get to really ask her, but that's only the second girl I've ever seen locally driving a GTR. The other one was a white GTR and it was a white mom in her like fifties. I don't know. I uh, bought the GTR used, of course, let somebody else take that immediate thing. What does your car, what does it mean? A car is a grandma, grandpa or girl. I have no idea. I guess. Uh, when will be your next live video? Uh, Edgar, usually every Sunday night, Edgar. Unless I'm on vacation, it's every Sunday night is when I do live streams. What air freshener is in the GTR right now? It is still the turtle wax one. The one that little uh, the little canister one that you pop pop off and set off. When you get in the GTR, because I don't drive it all the time, you can still smell a hint of that tropical Caribbean smell. It's really cool. It's nice, actually. Especially when you turn air conditioning on, it's like, ah, uh, it hits you. Did you buy a warranty from the dealership? No, because I bought the car from a, a, an exotic car dealership in West Palm Beach from Marina Performance Autos in West Palm Beach. So, no, I didn't buy a warranty at all. The Mini Cooper is definitely a girl's car. If you're a guy, you might be gay. Not that, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Aaron, if you if you swing that way, Aaron, you know, hey, that's all you. But usually it's usually a gay guy that's driving it. If he's drives, driving a Mini Cooper, it's just the way it goes. Um, can you do a every Saturday night? No, Matthew, because I'm usually doing stuff with the family. Uh, Saturday is devoted to a regular car review. Sunday is live stream. Monday is a regular review or a, a head to head bottle. Uh, Wednesday is a live review or a head to head battle. Friday is going to be foam Friday. And then we're back to the cycle again. That's the way it goes. Were you afraid of buying a used sports car? Uh, no, not at all. They had full background history. They had Carfax on it. They had an independent inspector come check it out. It's the weirdest thing I ever did with buying a car from the exotic car dealership down there in Palm Beach. Uh, they they bring in uh, third party companies to inspect the cars to give them a, a, a neutral review, and then they take them to a mechanic to give them an overview. And they gave me every one of these pieces of papers. I've never bought a car like that where they're just like giving you. They just they give you the car facts. They give you the independent or inspector reviews and uh, mechanical reviews. It was pretty crazy. Well, if, uh, I mean, I bought my 370Z used. I bought it at the the Greenway Greenway Ford or no Green, Greenway Dodge over there on the other side of Orlando near UCF. That's where I bought my 370Z. So it was used. My Prelude, my blue Prelude, came from uh, Syracuse, New York. It was at a, a Honda dealer in Syracuse, New York, in 2006. The white Prelude was awfully obviously used. I bought it off a of locksmith. Yeah, I only bought one brand new car. It was a Honda Accord back in 2000, and uh, I wouldn't buy a new car like that again. It's just I lost my ass in that car after two years. I sold it, and I actually took a, took a loss. That sucked. Used to be on Fridays, but it worked out a lot easier on Sundays. I work in the shipping industry, Rashad. What cruiser are you going next? Um, I won't post less. I'll already, oh, Aaron, I'll have videos done for you already. We're going on the Norwegian Escape out of New York City to Bermuda. So we'll be on a seven-day cruise to Bermuda out of New York City. And it's in June. We're going in June. 
So just give me a heads up. But don't worry, I'll have videos out for you guys. You'll still have regular videos. You just won't have a live stream. Good night, Joanna. Thanks so much for stopping by, and thank you for being a car-loving girl. It is really a nice, fresh breath of air because we just don't get many of you guys in here. So please come over here anytime you want. And Joanna, consider selling your AMG and buying a GTR and come hanging out with us. We'd love to have you. There's a huge South Florida GTR group. Huge. They, they make runs all the way to the Keys. They go all over. They go to, to, uh, down 75 towards Naples, and they go. they are all over the place. So Joanna, sell the AMG and hang out with GTR. Get you one. Come hang out with us. Good night, Edgar. Thank you so much, Rashad. I really do appreciate it. It's always been fun hanging with you guys and making these videos, especially as a hobbyist detailer and to bring almost 22,000 subscribers together. That really means a lot. So there you go. Oh, great. Here we go. Cody is going to start to hit on the girls. No, Cody. No. 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 She's mine. She's mine. I'm just messing with you. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut, cut it at the live stream. We went over a little bit longer than I really wanted to, but I am exhausted. I'm going to go take a shower, get cleaned up, and uh, turn into an old man now and go curl up and go to sleep. So I'll see you guys in tomorrow's videos. If you haven't seen this weekend's videos for the foam, foam, where the hell did it go, gun? Yeah, this thing. Go check it out. Go check it out. Leave it a full, sweet-ass thumbs up. Share it. And then um, go from there. And then we'll uh, see you all tomorrow is the OxyClean foam video. Tuesday is Stoner Car Care's new five-gallon bucket. They're going to be selling all their different products in the bucket. It's really cool. but It is about $100, but it's because they give you like 10 different items, and it. it's pretty crazy. And then uh, Wednesday, I'm going to do another head-to-head -head battle video. And then Friday, we'll be doing a car wash foam Friday. And then Saturday, I really want to do a head-to-head -head this versus – um chemical guys torque foam can so be sure to look out for this stuff and i'll see you guys at the very next videos thanks so much for being a subscriber it means more than you guys love or know take care y'all